Yes, congratulations. You made the best decision of your life today, and that's joining us at your Feel Good Breakfast show. Good morning. Are you good so? morning. Good morning, Ronald. Yes. I'm good, thank you. <laughs> you know what? It is officially the 1st of February, what? which means really? it's the month of love. Girl. You can see by our outfits, I'm already wearing the red. <laughs> You're wearing some pink. Feels good. Be ready for a lot of this throughout the month of Feb. But you know what? I think it's going to be nice to look forward to some awesome date night ideas. Yeah, we've got gifting, I think, inspiration in the kitchen. There's so much happening this morning. And we're also getting some specialists to come through. So this morning, we've got Grant Hines joining us. He's reviewing The Last of Us, which is a game that we are all looking forward to. And Lorenzo Darius is here. He's going to be talking about all things sport. Last night, some magic happened, if you're a Liverpool fan. But also, the African Cup of Nations is well in its way. We're into the knockout stages. And there's a lot to look forward to here. Oh, a lot of sporting action indeed. And then we're also going to talk trends. How can you embrace slow living trend with the pharma, uh, the, the pharmacist? pharmacist. Um, we also have a lot to unpack and really just to get to enjoy mm. taking uh, things slower. I thought it was a pharmacist, a pharmacist, a pharmacist. I think it's actually a pharmacist. So this is something interesting. I can't wait to find out what exactly this all means, but all this and a whole lot more in the next three hours. For now, though, well, it's time to take a little bit of a step into the direction of chatting to you, Mzanzi. And that's, of course, where we get to talk about the Good Morning Post. Now, it is the month of love, as you've just heard. We donned in red, but we want to find out from you what are some of the most interesting or fun ideas that you have when it comes to the perfect gift for Valentine's Day. But the the trick is wrong answers only. All right, so what is it going to be? Here's an example. If I was to have a significant other and I wanted to give them a gift and it was the wrong answer, I'd say, uh, hey, here's a, a voucher for some alone time. You see what I mean? You, you see where this is going. All right, you get me. So come through, let's have some fun with this one. I know we're going to have some great answers coming through the numbers 06340 if you want to share some voice notes or use the hashtag Expresso Show and come through on our WhatsApp line or any of our socials. For now, the official duties must commence and Zoe's standing by with the latest. Well, let's start off with those national news. The African Continental Free Trade Area was launched in Durban yesterday with an exhibition of the first products to be exported under the provisional terms of the agreement. President Cyril Ramaphosa attended the event together with the Minister of Trade, Industry and Competition, Ibrahim Patel, and the Premier of KwaZulu-Natal, Numusa Dubenkube. The Continental Free Trade Area is aimed at diversifying exports, increasing prod productive capacity, fueling growth, creating jobs, and promoting economic inclusiveness. Among the South African products that are to be exported are medical supplies, electronic equipment, steel products, and food. Residents of the pristine wilderness areas of Pringle Bay and Betty's Bay in the Overstrand municipality of the Western Cape remain on tenterhooks as a massive wildfire continues to burn. Several community members of Pringle Bay were ex evacuated urgently on Tuesday. At least four houses were destroyed. Dean O'Neill, manager of the Overstrand municipality, said it could take another two days to get the fire under control. This is one of five major fires spread out across the Western Cape. Municipalities in the Western Cape have memorandums of understanding in place to assist each other. Moving to news beyond our own borders, the Kenyan opposition leader has accused President William Ruto of planning to defy a court ruling against the set of deployment of police to Haiti to act against gangs. Ikuru Aukat, who last week successfully challenged the planned deployment in court, said the president could only deploy the army and not the police. The court found that the mission was illegal, and a judge said Kenya's National Security Council, headed by the president, does not have the authority to deploy regular police outside the country. And five CEOs from major tech companies are testifying at a Senate hearing in Washington in the U.S. about the protection of children from online sexual exploitation. The five are facing some fiery questions with Meta boss Mark Zuckerberg being asked, what the hell were you thinking over an Instagram prompt directing users to possible child abuse material? Zuckerberg and TikTok CEO voluntarily agreed to testify, but CEOs of SnapX, formerly known as Twitter, and Discord initially refused and subsequently received government-issued subpoenas. 
And bringing it back home, South African superfan Mama Joy clinched the Fan of the Match award during the clash against Morocco on Tuesday, which Bafana Bafana won by two goals to nil. Known for her unwavering support, Mama Joy, whose real name is Joy Choke, rocked the stands with her vibrant outfits, stealing the spotlight as always. Despite recent criticism suggesting she favoured rugby over soccer, Mama Joy's silent doubters with her fever and cheer, dancing and colourful attire, earning praise even from opposing fans. The Confederation of African Football commended her spirited attire on Twitter. Mama Joy, adorned in South African iconic green and yellow, proved once again that her loyalty to Bafana Bafana knows no bounds, winning hearts and accolades alike. Well, that's where I leave your headlines. Let's get a first look at your sport. Thank you so much, Zoe. Yes, let's dive into all things sport. And as a Liverpool fan, I've got a smile on my face. Yeah, because Liverpool dazzled at Anfield last night, trouncing Chelsea 4-1. Now, star performer Connor Bradley, the 20-year-old right back, not only scored but set up goals for Diogo, Diogo Jotto and Dominic Schlobberjlai. Despite Christopher Nkunku's efforts for Chelsea, Luis Diaz sealed the deal. Now, Jurgen Klopp's squad now holds a solid five-point lead atop the Premier League with the showdown against Arsenal looming on Sunday. Well, from footballing action, we head over to the latest in cricket and Kwene Mapaka's stellar performance led South Africa under-19 to a dominant nine-wicket victory against Zimbabwe's under-19s. Now, Mapaka's five-wicket haul restricted Zimbabwe to 102 runs and in a swift response, South Africa chased down the target in 13.3 overs, securing 103 runs with just one wicket down. Now, this win boosts the Proteas under-19 net run rate, placing them second in the standings ahead of the West Indies in the race for a semi-final spot. While sticking to cricket action and sunrises, Eastern Cape dominated the Joburg Super Kings with a resounding nine-wicket bonus point victory at the Wanderers in, SA in SAT 20. Now, the Sunrisers bowlers set the tone, restricting Super Kings to a mere 78 runs. And in a swift response, David Milan's unbeaten 40 runs not out and Tob Abel's 26 propelled Sunrisers to victory in the 11th over, losing only one wicket along the way. Now, the win secures their spot in the SA20 playoffs. Now, lastly, in our sporting action, we move to the world of motorsport. And Formula One has rejected Andretti's bid to join the circuit, expressing concerns over the team's competitiveness. Now, Andretti, led by Mario and Michael Andretti, aim to be F1's 11th team from 2025 or 2026. But Formula One stated that an 11th team must add value through competitiveness and Andretti's application fell short. However, a potential entry in the 2028 a year is not ruled out, aligning with General Motors' plan to produce its engine for Andretti. Well, that's all the latest action and uh, news when it comes to all things sport, but here's Zoe the latest on all things weather. And here's a weather update while fires and flare-ups continue wreaking havoc in the Western Cape and firefighters are fighting a fierce battle to bring matters under control. Comes a warning from the SA Weather Service that extremely high fire danger conditions are still expected over the Western Cape today. The same forecast applies for the western parts of the Northern Cape and this will be exacerbated by extremely uncomfortable and very hot conditions which are expected in places over the Western Cape, mainly the interior until tomorrow. Moreover, the heat wave in places over Sara Bartman and Krishani district municipalities, as well as the Raymond Mashlaba and Amashlati local municipalities in the Eastern Cape, is expected to continue until Saturday with persistent high temperatures. That's your weather update. Let's take a look at your sunrise view. We kick it off this morning with Ashwin from George sharing his gorgeous sunrise view. Look at those beautiful hues of pinks, oranges and blue. Well, if you would love to share your morning view with us, do so on our WhatsApp line. That number is 63 408 On that note, let's take a look at your temperatures for today.
Yes, we are with the boys, and uh, no, we're not up to mischief. We're looking through uh, what's happening on the show this morning. Scrum. Yeah. Oh, really? Are we going to scrum? No, but I'm getting excited. Uh, not because no of just the energy here, but the fact that you guys are bringing something to look forward yeah. to. So, firstly, we've got a game to review, yeah? We've got The Last of Us 2 remasters. Yes. I can't wait for that. And then secondly... We've got Afghan. Ooh, so the boys are here. They've come to play, and you don't need to go anywhere, Mzanzi. Lots of energy, lots of action coming at you in just a bit. Okay, touch, pause. Engage! Yeah. Uh, okay, is it that i <laughs> Yes, yeah, Subzanzi, welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And as promised, one of the boys of the two that have arrived to give us entertainment is here right now. We're talking about AFCON. The quarterfinals have officially taken stage. And we've officially arrived with some big names in African football, not on the match sheets for the upcoming games. Talking about Angola, Cape Verde, DR Congo, Guinea, Ivory Coast, the host nation, Mali, Nigeria, and our very own Bafana Bafana, which have all booked their spots in the final eight. So you had to chat to us about Afcon is Express on Sport producer Lorenzo Dar is in the building. Bing, 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 bing. You were going there, eh? Yeah, Stops you know it goes there. It's a big day, man. Listen, yeah. what is happening, bro? Yes. Let's address this elephant in the room. Yeah. There's no Senegal. Yes. No Egypt. Yeah. Tunisia. Who else? Algeria. Most Ghana important. and Morocco. There you go. Gone. The most important one, Morocco. What? You know? Uh, I don't know. Uh, shout out to my to my mate Jam Jam, the comedian, Jam. eating Moroccan chicken uh, by Woolworths and just putting it out there. That's all we had yesterday, Moroccan chicken. Yeah, man. Wow. Obviously, <laughs> like South Africa doing the most yeah. there, knocking out the host nation and a nation that has had no pressure on them for a couple yeah. of years now when it comes to soccer. Is this what we yeah. needed? 
I think this is what the tournament needed as a whole, eh? mm. just to rejuvenate itself because you've got the European teams uh, as well as some of the other influential teams saying that the Africa Cup of Nations is a small tournament. It's not a small tournament. No. If you look at where these players are playing in Morocco and Egypt, they're playing in Europe, they're playing in best France. Best in the world. Oh, yeah, yeah, best leagues, England, France. You know. This is what we <laughs> want to get behind. Yeah, you know that underdog definitely. story is perfectly being played out here and not just in the scoreline, but I mean, even look at Pafana's road to this yeah. spot. But now oh. they were struggling. They were doing oh. what we kind of almost expected. Yes. And I heard a lot of people saying, oh, "We're not upset about this. This is mm. kind of like what we were expecting in the yeah. result." But then they come through when it counts with yeah. this new vigor, somehow getting their composure together on the day. What do you think this bodes for those big teams, though? Is there maybe a, a bigger reason behind this? Do you think that the bigger teams having these international players playing at the highest league with the new increased demand, do yeah. you think this is causing more effect on the fatigue, on the longevity <laughs> of these players, on the ability to show up when yeah. it comes? Yeah, if you look at sports and its global calendar at the moment, there's sports happening all the mm. time. Mm. These guys are being pushed to their limits. Players that played in the 1970s and the 1980s might have played. What can we look forward to? Obviously, it's quarterfinals time yeah. now. Uh, incredible matches have taken place. Yes. We're now into crunch phase. Yeah, yeah. What's the lineup looking like? What can we expect from these <sighs> matches? Yeah. And uh, what are your sort of predictions as well yeah. while we're at it? Just looking at it though, uh, it's going to be Nigeria and Angola. That's going to be a tough one. Uh, Cape Verde against Bafana Bafana. We should take that one. Um, Ivory Coast, the hosts, they they definitely going through. So, um, yeah, I, I just feel that there's there might be one or two surprises. Uh, Guinea as well, Mali, I think Mali might just edge them. Um, but with what's happening in this tournament, I, I just can't call it because I'm going to be honest, I feel bad for myself because I was, when I looked at our draw with Morocco, I was like, oh, maybe yeah. Danny Jordan and Hugo Bruce should, you know, try and get like uh, the tickets sorted now already. <laughs> because for some reason, I just felt that Morocco had the steam to go forward. Yeah, and they got the support they as well. They got the support as well. And that did not happen, you know? So I got proved wrong. So I, I don't want to put too much pressure on them, but I feel that uh, we've, we, we've struggled with Cape Verde before, mm. but I feel like it is ours to go through all the way. We should be taking on Nigeria in the semifinals because that is a massive one. Two powerhouses of, of, of African football. We've got that love-hate relationship with Nigeria at the moment. Yeah. And I know it's going crazy on the socials that Nigerians have come out and been like, you know, South Africans, we're taking you on. And it's going, that's going to be a big one um, should we then make it uh, past the stage. And I feel like we have to. Oh, we have to. And with the momentum that we have now after the last game, I definitely yeah. do believe now more than ever. So, Lorenzo, thank you so much for coming through, adding yeah. more hype to the expectation oh, of Africa. On. And there's a lot to look forward to, Mzanzi. We'll be touching base again after the quarterfinals and uh, chat about some of the results of this incredible tournament. But uh, Lorenzo, Thanks standing by, he'll give us the latest. <laughs> and I look forward to it, man. Beautiful stuff. <laughs> Oh, thank you, gentlemen. Well, we are now putting the spotlight from the game to some gaming. And one of the greatest games ever to have released is Remastered. It is The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered. And it has a few tricks up its sleeve to get us all back into the experience. Grant Hines, he is here to let us know whether it is a yay or a nay. Grant, this is part two. If you never played part one, can you play part two? That's always my question. Uh, yes, you, you <laughs> definitely can. And because this is a remastered, Last of Us 2 uh, obviously came out uh, after the first one and it's already out. This is a remaster of the, of the second one and there was a remaster of the first one. But so they keep remastering things. Quick question, this looks really real and I'm assuming quite violent. Is there an age restriction? There's definitely an age restriction. This is for adults. Um, because there are very mature themes in this. Not only just the fact that there's a lot of action in the game, there are just a lot of mature themes that are discussed in the story, which is awesome, which I actually want more games to be able to do. It's like a good piece of literature. In fact, when I say it's one of the greatest games ever made, I, like, I really, really mean it. The Last of Us 2 is just, they, they, it tackles so many cool things. So just to give you a little bit of a rundown, oh, oh, there's, a, there's, a, there's th someone there in the shadows. It's yeah. very foggy. Yes, yeah, very foggy. Let me, let me, let me take them out quick, quick. I was gonna take them out. Ooh. Oh my gosh, we are live on TV right now and Grant Hines is getting distracted. Yeah, I, we, we play games. Because you don't wanna die. So we're playing this, uh, okay. <laughs> so let, me, let me just quickly explain to you how Last of Us is. So they, and you can't pause it. Who's no, that person? No, 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 I'm running, you gotta run. No, no. So I might die, which because we are playing on TV and it's real hard to do this. Um, are you, no, where's my friend? Help me! <laughs> 
Hey! You're alone. I am, do, no, no, do I'm I have alone. to have a remote? Uh, uh, hey, hey, no, no, you don't have to have a remote. Okay, okay. So, let me, so let me let me run down, because I don't get distracted. I have to pause it. Okay, so The Last of Us um, is a game that is set in a post-apocalyptic world where, like, there's a lot of... There's something kind of like uh, COVID, but it's taken over... It's, it's a fungal virus, and it's taken over, and it's created a lot of... Uh, like zombies, They're like do you know those parasites? I don't know if you've seen them. Those David Attenborough ones, where they uh, take over the the minds of the of the of of the snails and stuff. I but have it's happened not, to humans. So it's happening here in this game. Yes. Um, so it's happening in this game, and it's it's um, uh, it's a little bit it's a little bit. Uh, um, it's interesting in the fact that it's not about that. That's just where the, the action is, is. But it's about what happens when humanity are in that situation. Okay. Um, and these and intimate stories. Um, the Last of Us 2, very divisive story in terms of they... Uh, I don't want to give two spoilers away because if you haven't Wait, played... Give me an idea. You don't have to give me an, a specific spoiler. But g when you say there are different themes being unpacked, what are the types of themes? Is it now like a free for all? Because you clearly don't have to budget when you go grocery shopping. What kind yeah, of themes so are these? There, that there's a talk? lot of human factions that are engaging with one another. And uh, obviously, there's a free for all between them. And uh, the. You're, okay, I'm going to give is, a little bit this of. This is Grant Hines trying to be politically correct. No, I want to give a little. I, without giving the spoiler away. Okay. Um, so <laughs> at the end of the okay, the, uh, the first game is, is old. At the end of the first game, your your main character Ellie, who's also in the TV show, which we'll talk about a little bit later, um, is the only person that they know that's immune to this virus. Ah. So scientists want to uh, to find out what's wrong or what's well with her, so that they can create a vaccine for the rest of humanity. Unfortunately, that process is going to kill her. Okay. So the main character, the other main character that you play is Joel, who's a, her father-like figure. So there's a father-daughter relationship that happens in it. And instead of going what's best for humanity and what she consents to, because she goes, actually, this is the right thing. I'm, I'm, we need to do this. In, on the operating th theater table, he kills all the scientists that are uh, doing it and tells her they couldn't find a way to do it. Cheers, drives off. She doesn't know about it until the sequel. Okay. And now the twist is, the twist is, the actual people in the game, the, the scientists, doctors, um, their family members are looking for the people that, that killed their father. So then all of a sudden you're like, there are all these new characters that you just jump into and get to play. And then a lot of people are very angry with this, this because it becomes controversial because characters die really quickly. Okay. Characters that you fall in in love with die really, really fast. Now I understand um, why this is one of your favorite games. Okay, so you 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 gave us the 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 ending of the first part. Yes. So there were no spoilers. You should have played the first part by yes. now. So now I understand why you don't want to give so any don't spoilers give away. because they, it's a whole experience. And I think they're brave in the in the, in their storytelling because a lot of people wanted to to get that. Anyway. Better graphics is a brand new mode called No Return, and we can talk about that a little bit later. This is the one I'm playing right now. And uh, it's a really cheap upgrade from the first one. I think it's $10 if you have the digital version. Or if you haven't played it, I highly recommend playing this. And now's your opportunity to play it the best graphics. Yeah, it's amazing. Amazing. Well, Grant Hines is not going anywhere. He is staying with us. And we're asking you to stay with us because we're going to continue to dive a little bit deeper. So let's find out what else is coming coming up on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Hey, Zanele. Good morning, beautiful Zoe and Cape Town. And oh my goodness, good morning, Zanti. We're coming to you live from the Johannesburg studio. And this morning, oh honey, we have got so much on the way from artists to us getting into gardening and so much more. But first and foremost, coming up, we're gonna be getting into the ICC and the 19s Men Cricket World Cup. And this is something that I know so many of us are excited about because one thing us as South Africans know how to do is win World Cups, yes? And this is why we're joined by none other than Cricket South Africa. Then, of course, you know, we love when Grant gets into some of the most incredible games and The Last of Us is one of those that he's going to be continuing to get into. So make sure you stick around because it is all coming up right here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. We're going to take a short break. I always say two minutes only. Coffee, bathroom, then you come back and we continue with Expresso right here on S3.
It's my feel good breakfast show. It's between 6 and 9 a.m. on S3, which means that your Feel Good Breakfast show is on your television. And we're so glad we get to do this together because, honestly, there's only one way to start the day, and that is together. So when we talk about togetherness, actually, one of the things that brings us together most in South Africa is none other than sport. And at the moment, it is none other than the ICC Under-19s Men's Cricket World Cup that is underway in our beautiful country. And it is so lovely in terms of what is going down because 16 teams were placed into four different groups with the top three qualifying for the Super Sixes and heading into the semi-finals and finals for the 6th, 8th and 11th of February. Which is why today we had to have Cricket South Africa in the studio. I am talking about tournament director Wanele Mgomezulu who is joining us this morning. Wanele, how are you? Good morning, Zane. Thank you very much for the invite. Of course. Thank you for coming and for bringing this shiny, delicious thing. I see your gloves are in your hand. It's beautiful, no? It, it's stunning. You said that the name is? Tembalet. Tembalet, our hope. Our hope. And sport is our hope here in South Africa. Ah. It's exactly that. You actually hit the nail there with your opening. Oh. So it definitely does unite and bring everybody together. Yes. And we're hoping that this baby will literally stay at home. I, I, I hope so as well. I feel like that this beauty deserves to do exactly There's that. no pressure to our boys, but no. we need it home. Yes, please, we need it. <laughs> However, we know that this huge tournament is something that is so big for us. Please speak to us about what it does actually about for, or rather for, the sporting community in South Africa, particularly for cricket? Uh, I think just one from just the investment itself, as you would know, which we've got 16 countries that are in the country at the moment. Mm -hmm. And just that investment alone, just from a preparation, accommodation, transport, tourism, and the beauty about it, it's kids under 19, so they bring their parents. Yay. So you've now got all the 16 parents countrywide coming to the country. I actually traveled with the, with the Australian parents the other day. and uh, So you can imagine the economic benefits that comes to that. And then from a social impact, we're literally touching each and every school that we're hosting the games at. So we're working with all the municipalities mm -hmm. going through and then impacting the game and that. Yeah, and speak to us a little bit as well just about the preparation for such a huge tournament. Because like you said, 16 teams, how has that been going? And even with you being the tournament director, how is it? So the beauty is we've just hosted the two World Cups not so long ago, mm -hmm. about 18 months ago. So fresh from that, it was easy just to bring together all the LOC members to say we're at it again. We're literally just filing all those papers yeah. and then we're hosted with these rights. Uh, it is made up of different streams. The biggest one obviously being the security cluster. We mm. work very closely with the uh, net joints. And then there's a cricket offside. And these are the guys that actually plan what happens behind the scene. And that. So what you see on the pitch, it's probably a tiny scale of what happens behind the scene in terms of the hotels, the transport, the yeah. cricket balls, all of that bit. So there is a stream that runs it with. There's a security cluster. And then there's a legacy, which is very much from a passion point that really says what happens after the tournament. How do we impact, you know, how do we leave the lasting legacy in that? And that's where my passion points lie. 100%. And Wanele, I can tell you like being the boss, eh? Because, Not really. Ha -ha, you, you are representing so well. Tell us I just everything. coordinate. My job is just coordinating. Uh, so please. It's the modesty for me. <laughs> I love it. But Wanele, we all know that when we speak about the great sporting talent that comes out of South Africa, it's always nurtured at a very grassroots level. So speak to us about that as well in terms of what exactly is happening with the programs and skills development that we want to see with the boys and just in terms of cricket. So, interestingly enough, if you're watching the games now, we've actually got some good talent coming through. Mm -hmm. The likes of Stokes, the likes of Gwena Mapaka, who yeah. are doing phenomenally well at this tournament. And this is just some of our guys. And then obviously, from other teams as well, we are seeing some great talent countrywide yeah. as well, uh, globally as well. And that investment really says we've got a future. Yes. You know? And these are future stars. So, this is where the likes of Kahiso Rabada, your Adrian Makram, who started here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So all these guys that you're seeing now, the Kahiso Rabadas, the Adrian Makrams, they actually started in the under-19, and they won oh. the 2014 World Cup. Yes. So that's why I'm saying to these guys, there's no pressure. This was 2014. <laughs> so a few years later, this thing has to stay here and that. And the programs that we're running is going to each and every school to say there is a career, there is a future in sport. And not only what happens in the field, but what happens outside of that. Because we're looking at doctors. We need physicians, we need nutritionists, we need all of these guys that can really support the entire sporting uh, fraternity. Yes, and you need a water girl. 
There too as well. Yes, it's, okay. Uh, it's I'm, looking, massive. I'm looking for a side hustle, <laughs> particularly on the weekend. Amazing. Speaking of the weekend, of course, that is sometimes where we see some of most of the games. How accessible is the ICC under 19 men's cricket to us? It's a free event. So we are actually yes. calling all the parents, families, the schools. And one, I must say thanks to all the various departments that we've been working with so far. We've probably had almost 15,000 kids wow. racing our stadiums over the last 14 days. Uh, there is more. Mm. We are now heading into the semis and as well as the finals. There's definitely more impetus that we're trying to put together. And I love that. And I, we love anything free in South Africa. Everything yeah, yes, expensive, yes. so we just... <laughs> and that's exactly it. I mean, if you look at this, the investment that goes to it, it's in, it's in millions, yeah. you know, close to a billion that yeah. we're investing in this tournament in there. And for it to be free, for South Africans to really just come out, support, and it's not only supporting the games, but it's these youngsters that yes. are saying, in future, these are the guys that will be the flag bearers. I love that. And well done, Wanele. I feel like you guys have done such an incredible job. I mean, you're currently in the last quarter of it, and I feel like it's going to be so incredible. And like you said, this beautiful baby in front of us, it is staying here in South A. It's got no choice. It's staying here. 100%. And to Gauteng us out there, we are coming to your schools next week, Wednesday and Friday. We're literally touring all the schools, mm -hmm. literally taking this baby to all the different schools and that. So as we're heading to the final on the 11th of February, we really want to see all the Gautengas going into Pinoni for the final. Come on! It's going to be huge. It's going to be incredible. Explosive cricket is what we can expect. And this is why, my friend, you've got to be part of it. And we need to get behind our boys, as we always do when it comes to sport in South Africa. Right about now, though, I know that a king who loves sport as well, Ryle, is standing by in the dining room. Oh, great conversation. We'll be catching up and heading back to Joburg. There's lots more to look forward to. But right now, we're going to carry on reviewing a game that has been taking the world by storm originally. Now it's been remastered. And now we've got some comments to get through. Now, The Last of Us is what I'm talking about. And it's a historically important and impactful video game. And it's a series which is uh, pretty important when it comes to video games in general. And Grand Hines is back to tell us exactly why. Now, listen, bro, we got all the hype out of the way. We know what we're talking about right now. But let's dive a little bit deeper uh, you briefly touched on some of the variations that we had from the original to the remastered version but i want to dive a little bit deeper into some of those uh, variations uh, what else can you highlight for me that really is a little bit different in this new version that i think anyone picking up the game is actually going to love okay so i actually we're busy playing a, a game mode called um no return it's brand new to the game so uh, this is something you wouldn't actually get in the This original is something version. you won't get in the original, okay. and I really like the fact that they've done this. I'm just going to get some, going to heal up myself, quick, quick sticks. Um, the whole idea behind this mode is that there's something in old school game thing, uh, design called um, a roguelike dungeon crawler. Okay. So roguelike dungeon crawlers are these ways of going through uh, something randomly, like, like, uh, like a randomly generated level, and then when you die, you kind of respawn. Hades was the big one. We did Hades on the show, if those, if those of you remember. I, I love that kind of gameplay. Um, it, it rewards you for dying because you go back to your home base with better skills. Oh, okay. So, uh, and then you can progress and get stronger and stronger and stronger as you, as you get. It's like real life, our obstacles that push us back, make us stronger, and we come back even better. Except there's no respawn in real life. <laughs> yes, you will die in real life. Unless you've got Ryle's abs, <laughs> then maybe you respawn. Um, uh, so, so it's it's a very it's a very cool way to get into the game mechanics. Oh, I died. Oh no! Um, uh, I, I see. I encounter uh, this encounter got failed. So now we go back to the home base, and because we had home base, we can now then use some of the skills that we've learned in this encounter ah, to do it again. Okay, and, and hopefully do it better. And do it better. <laughs> and then it's, it's randomized, so it's not the same every single time. Where enemies come from is different. Oh, so you still got to keep your wits about you. It's yes. not like, okay, I can develop a pattern now yes. that I've figured it out. Ah. And, uh, some of my criticisms, I would have loved to have seen this uh, as a, uh, a co-op thing. So here's some of the missions that you can see over here. Uh, uh, so this is, the, it gave me a D because we did badly, that's <laughs> fine. Um, we, we, we did do this, um, um, you know, on TV, so that's real tough. Um, and then obviously because it's a uh, remaster, the graphics have improved by uh, quite significantly. Uh, well, I don't know, it's, a lot of people will differ. This was, the, this Last of Us came out at, in 2020. What and was that, was, like 1080p, what was that? Like? Yeah, it was, it was, t it, <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, you know, on the PlayStation 4, it was the, it was the whole last hoorah for the <laughs> PS4. Yeah. Um, and it's had such a huge cultural impact, like on the screen you see it right now, Nick Offerman played in the TV series, and Neil Druckmann wrote it, 
I say Drickman, I don't know how else you say his name. <laughs> I'm South African. Um, and he wrote the series uh, as well as the video game. And this is him uh, having the last dinner with his partner, his boyfriend that he meets in the apocalypse. And it won an Emmy because it's so moving. And it's, a, it's, it's like a little bit of the game in the first game that appeared that you just hear about. But then he wrote this whole story ar ar around it. And that's the kind of cultural impact that The Last of Us has. So you've had the first one and you have a remaster of that. And if you haven't played it, please do. And having a remaster of this, getting into the story, they subvert gaming in really creative ways. It's definitely worth getting into. Uh, well, you heard it from the GOAT himself. I'm talking about Grant Hines coming through with The Last of Us being remastered and giving it a thumbs up. Officially, if you haven't even played the game, then this is a great place to start. There's some great visuals yeah and it's going to keep you entertained for hours to come Grant Hines coming through with the goods thank you so much brother well played <laughs> oh well if you're a gamer like Grant well then upgrade to a hyper fiber uncapped home internet starting from 244 Rand per month and stand a chance to be one of five lucky customers to win one month free unlimited Wi-Fi an uninterruptible power supply unit and choose a school of your choice to win free Wi-Fi for a year. Now to enter, all you need to do is WhatsApp 64 Tell us your power outage story, follow the prompts and hashtag power up with Hyper. The competition closes on the 7th of Feb, so you've got a few days to enter. There are some T's and C's that apply. Well, it is your Feel Good Breakfast show. We still have loads on its way, so go refill those coffee cups. We'll see you in a bit. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Espresso on S3. Now, if you're feeling extremely thirsty with a mouth as dry as a desert and a headache playing tag, well, you might have entered the mild dehydration zone. Fear not, though. We've got the secret that will help bring back hydration faster than water alone. Now, we welcome back Kenview Sub-Saharan Self-Care Marketing Lead, Sane Mbele, who's joined by Health Ambassador Pablo Tala this morning who will be unpacking this topic more for us. It's great to have both of you ladies here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Zoe. I, I think maybe, Sade, you would be the best person to ask this question, but Pamela, feel free to jump in. When it comes to dehydration, we often find that drinking water alone is not enough to really get us back to that neutral zone. Why is it so important for us to get those electrolytes back? I'll let Pamela answer that. <laughs> the health question. She knows this every day, yes, the health <laughs> question. Uh, I would say when it comes to dehydration, 
when we lose water in mm -hmm. our bodies, it um, when we lose water in in our bodies, we we, we it 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 affects the the minerals mm. that we have in our bodies, and we really need to drink water when it comes there. Uh, it's very important to drink or to hydrate mm. because water is vital in our body. Water is uh, water helps water helps organs mm. in our bodies and helps minerals in our bodies. And without water, we cannot function. It helps the organs to function properly, and it helps us to keep going. Uh, so I think it's very important to to drink water every day. Definitely, yes. definitely. Now, who would you say is most at risk for experiencing dehydration? So overall, actually, anybody where your water, you're losing water faster than you're taking it in. Now, sometimes you've got uh, children who actually lose water faster because of their smaller bodies. Mm. Um, also, at times, the elderly as well because that sensation or that sort of reminder, natural body reminder to drink water actually uh, tapers off as, as, as we age. Um, but overall, it's important for everybody to just keep an eye out or a lookout for any signals of dehydration, that extreme thirst, that sort of drained, drowsy feeling. And, and I was actually going to ask you some of those symptoms because so of, often I was told that when you feel like you are thirsty, you're actually already a little bit dear. It, it's, it's almost a little too late, like you need to drink before <laughs> you feel thirsty. Is that the case for most people? Or what are some of the symptoms that you've, you've mentioned a few, the, the, the dry mouth and perhaps the disorientation. Are there any other symptoms we should be looking out for for someone that could be dehydrated? Uh, we'd probably talk more to... Yeah, there's thirsty on the one side. It's if we would probably say more around extreme thirst. Um, there's your body's got different ways of telling you you've already uh, over that edge of uh, not having drank enough water. But if you just you know already, um, I've only drank sort of one glass of water today, but <laughs> I've been to the bathroom. Or especially if you are particularly ill, um, where you either due to diarrhea or vomiting, anything to the symptoms to do with gastroenteritis, where you've been losing a lot more water than you're taking in, it does then eventually come with the sort of drained, foggy feeling, mm. dra um, not really able to fully, fully focus, fully concentrate. Now, my next question is, what sets Rehydrate apart when it comes to, you know, re-getting those electrolytes back into your system? So the great thing about Rehydrate is it's got this optimal balance of, or, of, of salts, so sodium, as well as potassium, which are your, your electrolytes that, um, as Pam was talking about, sort of help working together uh, with your minerals and absorb properly into your body. So you've got your, so you've got your sodium, you've got your potassium, and then the glucose also helps to absorb those even better, even faster into your body. So you've got your potassium, your sodium, and your glucose, work together to help you recover faster than just water alone. And um, our rehydrate flavors, black currant, mm. as well as orange, are actually registered with the South African Health Authority. So they are medicines that are specifically perfectly balanced for that recovery from dehydration. And it's so easy to use. It's a simple sachet that you mix into some water and you can drink it. Who is rehydrate perfect for in terms of who can drink rehydrate? So if you open your little leaflet when you open the product, always important to read the leaflet, is it's actually uh, perfect for anybody from infants or to the whole family, infants and all the way up. I spoke earlier about different people who have the potential to have um, uh, susceptible to dehydration. Mm. But uh, yeah, perfect for children who, like I said earlier, are more susceptible to dehydration, especially when um, with diarrhea and gastroenteritis or any vomiting that happens. And yeah, 
overall, <laughs> if you read your little leaflets, there's the different dosing for anybody from infants and all the way up to adults. Well, perfect for the whole family. Exactly. Well, Sane, thank you for joining us. Pamela, great to have you here. And in the face of life's dehydrating challenges, find the perfect balance to aid recovery foster and embrace lasting well-being. Drained? Dehydrated? You have lost more than just fluid. Recover faster. Add Rehydrate, SA's number one oral electrolyte mixture. Thank you so much, Zoe. And I love that you are talking about water and us needing hydration. Because I feel like just like that, for us to be able to grow, we need our kind of water. You know what I mean? And for me, that is having tranquility within our soul. But now I need to ask the question, what exactly is the link between farming and tranquility? Well, my friends, luckily enough, this morning we have got with us from the Johannesburg studio, it is Mosa, a.k.a. the Farmanist, who's going to be getting us exactly into that and a whole lot more. But first and foremost, Musa, you look as green and lovely. Lovely as your plants, my babes. Thank uh, you so much. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Are you good? I'm great. How are you? Amazing. Thank you. And I'm actually so excited to hear about this because people buy me plants all the time yeah. and then they die, Musa. Why? It's bad. I don't know, Musa. That's why I need you here. I'm here. I'm here to solve Thank that. You. I'm here <laughs> Thank to solve you. Thank you. Yeah. But you see, I, I know that I grew up with a mother, right? Who yeah. used to love gardening. She used to speak to her plants and mm -hmm. everything like that. Yeah. But she always used to say how do you used to speak to her soul. Yeah. And we're talking about tranquility and yeah. just the link between it and farming. Can you yeah, just yeah. speak to us about that? I mean, I, f I believe gardening is just an easy, most of the easiest way to just escape mm. from the daily stress. I mean, every day waking up, getting kids ready, going to work, it's really stressful. Yeah. So having a garden or going to a farm, it really gets you out of your comfort zone. You get to be one with nature. Mm -hmm. You get to escape from the daily noises. You just get to feel the birds, see the beautiful flowers, see the beautiful colors in the garden. So it's just the most easiest way. It's a, another form of therapy. Definitely, it is. I love that. It and is. this is the thing, right? So many people have misconceptions about farming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even just getting their fingers to be green. Yeah. What are some of the misconceptions that you know about? Uh, most of my clients, so we do consulting. We mm -hmm. teach our clients to, to start their own gardening. So most of them, they're like, I don't have green hands. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do it. Uh, gardening is hard labor, which is false. Honestly, everybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe, yeah. has green hands. Gardening is a process. Mm -hmm. It's not the final product. It's a process. I mean, it's all about just patience and knowing that if I put a seed in, nature has to take its course. Yeah. You yeah. do your part and nature will take its course so it's much it's easy everybody has green hands uh -uh, with you saying everybody has green hands uh, most, i feel like you're saying i don't have I'm green serious. hands because why do my plants always die that's my problem okay i think the basic rule is that plants just need sunlight yeah they just need water they, it's, it's just a baby, mm. a normal human baby. They just that. need <laughs> tender care. That's all they need. Yeah. Plants, it's just the same. They just need care. So if you just take care of them, they'll reciprocate. Okay, Musa, I'm going to make you proud. Ne? Okay. Which means someone needs to buy me a plant. Ne? Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, you were plant parents. <laughs> yes. But I want to just go back to what you said about patience. Yeah. I feel like when it comes to patience, maybe I'm not being patient with my plant, you yeah. know? Like I think the one time, a couple of years back, my mm -hmm. sister was like, I drowned one of my plants because I put in mm -hmm. too much water because I wanted it to bloom and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Mm. What kind of things do we need to take into account when having this patience and how does it cultivate a really peaceful space as well as just cultivating those green spaces around us? Uh, the one thing you need to know, plants are just like human beings. We all form part of the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. We are organisms at the end of the day. Yes. So plants will speak to you. I mean, they tell you what they need. Okay. For instance, we have a, an indoor plant in front of us, yes. if, you, if you can see. Yes. Uh, it's green. It's saying is happy. It's meaning it's, it's taken care of. So what if the leaves were falling? If the leaves were falling, it means that something is wrong. Okay. So you really need to practice that patience. Observe your plant. Mm. Know what's going on. If the plants are like the leaves are falling off, meaning something is wrong, meaning maybe they're dry, it needs you to water it. That's it. Okay. Just You just need to be mindful. Learn it. Learn your plant. Yes. Know it. 
And I mean, a happy plant, it's a happy you. Ah, I like yeah. this. Okay, Musa, the nice thing is that we're keeping you around for the yeah. next couple of years. Yeah. So we are still going to be getting these fingers very, very green, my friend, which is why Musa, aka the pharmacist, is going to be teaching us all about the ways in which we are able to get into slow living. Trust me, you need to hear about that. And then later on, we're going to be getting and rather embracing the Pantone color of the year. I need you to stick around for it as well because this is one that I could have actually predicted. It's such a beautiful color, but you'll be the judge of it a little bit later on. We're going to take a short break and we'll be back after this. Double cream plain yogurt from Clover. Just plain amazing. You're still on your Feel Good Breakfast show on S3. And I told you earlier on, we're getting our fingers green. Get it? You know what I mean? Thank you. <laughs> this is why we've got Musa, a.k.a. the pharmacist in the house. And Musa, of course, we spoke about tranquility, right, when it yeah. comes to farming. Yes. But now I want us to get into the social connection. Yeah. You know, what does it mean for us to have a social connection with our delicious plants? With our delicious plants. Yes. I mean, we, we live in a day and age where gadgets, cell phones. So garden is a great escape. Mm. To put down your phone, yes. get your friends inside the garden, get kids inside, get get everybody involved. Oh, yes. And just like what I'm going to demonstrate now, okay. it's, it's getting kids, getting parents, whoever it may be, to set their own seeds. Mm. I mean, a lot of us go to grocery stores, get yeah. our veggies. Why don't we start our own veggies? I, I really want to, but I just, I've never known how, but now I'm another another in my I'm life. Here. I'm you. here. I'm okay. here. So yes. what we have here, we have our potting soil, mm -hmm. we have our seeds. Here we have mm -hmm. our seeds. Then we have a container. You can reuse uh, egg contents that you have. You can reuse any container you have. Yes. Or you can buy this from any plant nursery. Uh, here I have small ones. Mm -hmm. You get to test out with your gloves. Yes. So we're starting... Uh, what can I do? Uh, do we just, do we yeah, just put it in I'm there? I'm just going to be pouring the pot and soil inside. Amazing. So, pour it in. so then what are these little cups for? Ooh, it's just me. the very same thing. Mm -hmm. This one, it will take in more seeds. This one, probably just one or two. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's so cute. I love this. So what this can I grow in here? It's so anything. small. <gasps> From your spinach, yes. I mean a seed. You just pour in your, your seed, anything can grow. I love that. Okay. So today we have uh, beans. Yes. We have beans in there. So we start with so, the soil and then yeah, we yeah. put in the seeds. Yeah, just okay. chuck it in. I'm just chucking her in with yeah. my green fingers. So now, mm -hmm. ooh, not a lot. Not oh. a lot. Not a lot. 
<laughs> I'm uh, so <laughs> just dig a hole inside. Oh, Thank so we, we just like one or two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I put the whole bag. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> just for... And then cover it up. Yes. We just cover it up. Cover it up quickly. Yes, yes, cover yes. Cover it up. Then pour in some water. Oh, we have right. some water there. To have the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pour in some water. Yes. Yeah. Nice. And Is that enough water? Do we, we need more? Pour some more. Pour some more, yes. So that our pot and soil can be wet. Okay. Yeah, so we enough. must make sure that every... Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't so need everything. what yet. is important is that each container yes. needs to have uh, drainage holes. Okay. That is why water is spilling out. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So why? not to lock the moisture. Mm. So that our seeds can breathe to grow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this. And exactly. this is why we have you here, Musa. Thank we you. want our seeds to grow. Yeah. And we are planting seeds of tranquility. Mm. Mm -hmm. seeds of social connection yeah. and so much more because Musa is going to be sticking around yeah. you need to make sure that you stick around because along with all of that there's so much more still right here on your feel good breakfast show but for now we're crossing over to Zoe who's standing by with the news Thank you, Zanele. Well, at 7 a.m., let's touch on your national headlines. The Electoral Commission says the voters' list has passed the 27 million mark for the first time. The Chief Electoral Officer says in the 2019 election, there were 26.7 million registered voters. Eligible voters can register at polling stations on Saturday and Sunday or check their details. This year, voters must vote at the polling stations where they registered. Registration continues until President Cyril Ramaphosa announces the voting date. And the African Continental Free Trade Area was launched yesterday in Durban with an exhibition of the first products to be exported under the provisional terms of the agreement. President Cyril Ramaphosa attended the event together with the Minister of Trade, Industry and Competition, Ibrahim Patel, and the Premier of KwaZulu-Natal, Numuso Dube Ngube. The continental free trade area is aimed at diversifying exports, increasing productive capacity, fueling growth, creating jobs and promoting economic inclusiveness. Among the SA products that are exported are medical supplies, electronic equipment, steel products and food. Moving to news abroad, Hamas is studying a new proposal to pause the fighting in the Gaza Strip. Hamas has been invited to discuss a framework set out by Israel, the US, Qatar and Egypt, proposing a six-week truce during which more Israeli hostages would be exchanged for Palestinian prisoners. Meanwhile, the head of the UN aid agency says the suspension of funding to the Palestinian Refugee Agency, or UNRWA, has catastrophic consequences for the residents of Gaza. Some of UNRWA's uh, staff members were allegedly involved in the October 7th attack in Israel. The Kenyan opposition leader has accused President William Ruto of planning to defy a court ruling against a set of deployment of police to Haiti to act against gangs. Ikuru Eikot, who last week successfully challenged the planned deployment in court, said the president could only deploy the army and not the police. The court found that the mission was illegal, and a judge said Kenya's National Security Council, headed by the president, does not have the authority to deploy regular police outside the country. And entertainment news this morning is that one of the largest record companies in the world, Universal Music, has announced that it's to remove all its music from the popular social network platform TikTok. This after the company and TikTok couldn't reach an agreement regarding the music rights and remuneration of artists. Universal says, music, Universal music says TikTok wishes to build its platform with the help of music, but isn't willing to pay the artist for it. TikTok, on the other hand, says its platform provides free marketing for all artists. The previous agreement expired earlier this week, which means the songs of musicians such as Taylor Swift, Harry Styles and The Weeknd will soon no longer be available on TikTok. Well, that's where I leave your morning headlines. Let's take another look at your sport.
Thank you so much, Zoe. Yes, let's dive once again into all things sport and starting with football news. And again, you can see the smile on my face. Why? Because Liverpool dazzled at Anfield, trouncing Chelsea 4-1. Now, star performer Connor Bradley, the 20-year-old right back, not only scored, but set up goals for Diogo Jota and Dominic Schlobberslei. Now, despite Christopher Nkunku's efforts for Chelsea, Luis Diaz sealed the deal. Now, Jurgen Klopp's squad now holds a solid five-point lead atop the Premier League with the showdown against Arsenal looming on Sunday. Now we move over to cricket news and Quena Mapaka's stellar performance led South Africa's under-19 team to a dominant nine-wicket victory against Zimbabwe under-19s. Now Mapaka's five-wicket haul restricted Zimbabwe to 102 runs. And in a swift response, South Africa chased down the target in 13.3 overs, securing 103 runs with just one wicket down. Now this win boosts the Proteas under-19 net run rate, placing them second in the standings, ahead of the West Indies in the race for a semi-final spot. Well, sticking to cricket action right now in the Sunrisers Eastern Cape dominated the Joburg Super Kings with a resounding nine-wicket bonus point victory at the Wanderers in the SA20. Now, the Sunrisers bowlers set the tone, restricting Super Kings to a mere 78 runs. And in a swift response, David Milan's unbeaten 40 runs not out and Tom Abel's 26 not out propelled Sunrisers to victory in the 11th over, losing only one wicket along the way. Now, the win secures their spot in the SA20 playoffs. Well, congratulations, but we carry on with the rest of the headlines. And lastly, we move over to the world of motorsport. Now, Formula One has rejected Andretti's bid to join the circuit, expressing concerns over the team's competitiveness. Now, Andretti, led by Mario and Mikel Andretti, aimed to be F1's 11th team from 2025 or 2026. Now, Formula One stated that an 11th team must add value through competitiveness, and Andretti his application fell short. However, a potential entry in 2028 is not ruled out, aligning with General Motors' plan to produce its engine for Andretti. Well, speaking of motorsport and the motors, a lot of you are driving through the roads heading into your motor vehicle, so let's see how we can serve you when it comes to all things traffic. Well, let's start off with some traffic in Midrand, Johannesburg. There's congestion on the N1 southbound between Olifantsfontein and Brackfontein Road. Expect delays. If you're in Cape Town, there's been an accident on the N1 inbound. It's before Gilbasson. The right lane is closed. Expect delays and please exercise caution. That's your traffic. Let's take another look at your weather. In the Western Cape, the fight against fierce blazes unfolds amid breathtaking scenery and brave firefighters working tirelessly to tame the flames, menacing homes and livelihoods. Pringle Bay on the Overstrand has begun the task of cleaning up after the destructive fire which initially prompted evacuations but later allowed residents to return. Meanwhile, near Rawsonville in the Boerland, firefighters are grappling with a raging inferno consuming the slopes of the Dwarsberg mountain range, which ignited near the Brandflay Correctional Facility. Although evacuations were underway, a fortunate change in wind direction spared some structures. Despite containment efforts in Elandsberg, Bainskloof and Ferry Glen, the toll on land is staggering, with some 24,000 hectares scorched. Yet amid the adversity, communities and firefighters rally together, bringing relief and hope amid the smoke. Well, it is 7 a.m. Let's take a look at your sunrise view. Keith de Goede from Edgemeet is sharing his morning view with us. You can see the beautiful orange tones in the sky. If you would love to share your good morning view with us, do so on our WhatsApp line. Our number is 063-408-8863. Here's a look at your temperatures for your Thursday.
Well, those are your temperatures for today. A hot day ahead. Yeah, Cape indeed. Town's heating up for sure. And also the show is heating up. There's lots to look forward to. And especially if you are passionate about the game. Now, what game are we talking about? Well, you can use your spot, well, your sport know-how to predict match day results and claim your share in today's Sports Take Jackpots. Yes, that's what's going down. It's your chance of winning big, which could become a reality off the pitch. This is exciting stuff. Definitely. Now, you can play your favorite Sports Take game on the National Lottery. .co.za's website. So make sure to play now and stand a chance to earn bragging rights. Hashtag be in your game. Yeah, be in your game for sure. But of course, we're going to carry on with the life of more slow living. And I can't wait to look forward to this. We've got some gifting ideas, especially with definitely. the month of love coming through. So that's something to definitely look forward to. <laughs> Beautiful S3 family, you're watching Expresso, and this is where we get into some of the most wholesome things each and every morning. And today, I am so excited because we're hearing from someone who's not just an agriculturist, she's also known as the pharmacist. I am taught, rather forgive me, the pharmacist. She is someone who people absolutely love because she teaches us how to get these fingers green. And more than anything else, one of the things that I really love, and she would definitely be Greta Thunberg's best friend, because she talks to people about how farming is in fact the way to go when we're trying to make the environment environment more sustainable as well as eco-friendly. So my lovely Musa, are you still good? I'm still great. I'm How are so you? glad. I'm great. All the better for All chatting green. to you. 100%. Yeah. Especially because you're going to make me a green mom. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah. But let's talk about our impact on the environment, right? Because we yeah, all yeah. know that in terms of the environment, so mm -hmm. many things go wrong, you know, mm -hmm. the bad things that are happening, but then apparently farming does a whole lot of good. Definitely. How so? I mean, uh, you have your banana here okay it's just uh, the first example what is this I banana mean, doing gardening promotes organic practices mm -hmm. creating your own homemade fertilizer or compost okay for example we have the banana here yes. you can take those banana peels yes chuck them into a glass or a container mm -hmm. pour water in set it for three to four days and there you have a fertilizer rich in calcium and phosphorus oh wow yeah. so what it's going to make like my plants and everything grow, grow. better than they would calcium mm -hmm. they have, encourages to grow mm -hmm. more healthier mm -hmm. phosphorus encourages to grow can i ask you a silly question okay can I take my calcium tablet <laughs> and I put it in the soil no okay, no I'm, no no I'm sorry. okay i apologize <laughs> no <laughs> but i want to ask Musa, yes, yeah. Yeah. Serious question. Mm -hmm. In terms of us and being, you know, eco-friendly, yes, you yeah. mentioned the one with the banana, mm -hmm. but what are some of the ways in which just farming as a whole allows us to rather contribute to the environment, just mm -hmm. being a little bit better for us and maybe making our world a little bit better as well? A, a little bit better. I mean, in Johannesburg, it's been raining for the past four to five days. 12,000 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Saving water. Okay. Take out your bucket outside, 
Uh, you use your rainwater for your plants. Yes. You save water there. Yes. Making use of the, uh, something called mulch. Uh, mm -hmm. It's something like this, what we have here on, our, on, on this plant. Yes. It's mulch. When you pour in water, it retains the moisture. Mm -hmm. So it lowers the frequent watering. Yes. So we're saving water. We're saving our planet. I love that. Yeah. And I also think that so many people, you know, aren't in the know of things like that. Yeah. In terms of how we can just get into being a little bit more friendly to our yeah. environment just by being farmers. Definitely. But to anyone who's currently watching and is like, you know what, I've been wanting to farm. What mm -hmm. do you say to them to kind of get them going and to encourage them to do so? Just start. Okay. Just start with what you have, mm -hmm. where you are. I always say garden how you live. Okay. You can't grow, maybe for instance, you dislike spinach yeah Why grow spinach grow something that you would love that you will care for yes. uh, if you love for instance as we we're saying spinach mm -hmm. grow it if you're living in an apartment i always say use a container i mean here we have a, a, a time yeah in a container you can grow how you live yeah just as simple as that uh, and you said that we must grow what we love yeah i, I wish i could grow money as when i'm also, <laughs> but you know what it's okay I'm... this year it's possible oh okay oh <laughs> Actually, but, but you're not wrong because also in yeah. terms of like if I become a big farmer yeah. and I have a big farm, I can, you know. The more the merrier. Exactly. I mean, agriculture is holding us like it's holding the whole world. Mm. The more the population, pe people need food. Yes. That's it. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, next time you see me when I'm going to have many farms, oh. when I'm also, I hope you know that. Yeah. Uh, but babe, speak to us as well, just in terms of getting the young kids in on it as well. Like mm. how can we educate them? Them, how can we get them to have a little bit of green fingers here and there, especially with how we know it's really eco-friendly? I mean, start them small. Mm. I mean, seeing you uh, switch off all the TV, all the gadgets, yeah. taking them in, walking them in the garden, seeing mommy trying out something in the garden. Oh. That's how you get them going. Yes. And it's a sense of uh, accomplishment. Them starting a plant from a seed, growing it and seeing it become a grown plant. Mm. It's, 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 it's something big. I think that when yeah. we talk about just the ways in which you're able to merge those things as well, because yeah. we said that plants help with, you know, mental health as Definitely. well. Being out and about, being mm. in nature and things like yeah. that. I think it's one of the yeah. beautiful things that comes from being a farmer, Definitely. but also then just being like, I'm going to have some plants yeah. here and there. Yeah. But let's talk a little bit about plant moms and plant dads, yeah. right? Because there's so many of us who do get these plants and have these plants. Yeah, Why yeah, did yeah. you love the them? Also? No, it's a trend. <laughs> I love it. I live yes. for it. I okay. live for it. Yeah, I but love it. When we're looking after our plants, what are just the last few tips that you can give us so that we can hopefully just allow them to grow and make our homes even prettier? Uh, the basic thing mm. is your plants will speak to you. Mm. Just watch it, listen to it. If it's sick or needs water, you test it out. For instance, if it's dry, yes. you'll do a finger test onto your soil. It says, I'm dry. I, I need didn't water. Know that. You know, yes. your plant speaks to you every single time. If the leaves are maybe yellow, brown. What if they're brown? I really have, I have a plant yeah. that looks exactly like this, and there's brown leaves here. I'm sad. Uh, have them fallen out? Yes. Maybe they were too dry. Okay. Or the other reason can be they may be getting too much sunlight. Yes. So move them away from the sun. That's it. You see, I didn't even know that you can get too much sunlight. Yeah, you can. You should. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Just like you. The feminist, you are 100% <laughs> speaking to us and you did say they just like us. Definitely. Thank you so much for joining Thank us, my love. Thank you for having me. And I'm going to make you proud. Yeah. I'm going to make the Next time I'm here, mm -hmm. I want to see all those flats. I got you, babes. <laughs> and the beautiful thing is that you as well, you can be that flat mom or flat dad or flat person because it is one of those things that honestly allows us to not just grow the plant, but we grow ourselves as well. Right about now, though, it is Ryle and Zoe standing by in Cape Town. Oh, thank you again, Salela, for that. And uh, we will be touching base once again and diving back into Johannesburg. But before we do that, let's dive back into the kitchen because it's time to indulge and love this Valentine's Day. Yes, it is the month of Valentine. And it's time to show that you care through small gestures that make your loved ones feel 
extra special. Now, Woolworths Taste Food Director Abigail Donnelly is here to give us some ideas on how to share the love and spoil your partner, friend or work colleague this Valentine's Day. Abby, how are you doing this morning? I'm good, and you? Yeah, good. It's officially the month of love. Uh, I love this month. As I can see, you're pretty yeah, pink. Yeah, we, we don't have anything red for you. Actually, if you don't mind, I oh thought, my let's, gosh. Just, let's just spruce you up here. We can, we can pop this somewhere <laughs> on you and then... Uh, I'll just stick it in my hair. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, well, here we go. I don't know how I look. How do I look? <laughs> it works. I love it. All right. So cool. we are officially kitted out. So we are dressed in the months of love. Yes. But what about our significant others? What about our loved ones and our family? What sort of ideas do you have that would really give a foodie that sensation of, oh, you thought about me, you care about <laughs> me, you know what I love, and this is the perfect gift. Have you got anything Absolutely. that ticks that box? Yes. We've got lots on the woolly shelves uh -huh. for Valentine's Day. We've got all the beautiful precious gifts which are hot caramel filled obviously the chuckles sweetie pies oh, yum. Yeah, yeah. and especially there's some beautiful gifts that mm. you can do with the family or with the kids um by yourself if you want and i've chosen there's a cupcake a pretty cupcake Ooh, yum, um, yeah. kit which comes with a great spatula you can actually show everybody there oh is that and a that's, yeah you can oh, take brilliant. that spatula out even and it's got little hearts on so that's cute but nice. i have chosen the waffle the waffle kit Oh. Which is really cool because you don't need a waffle machine. But you do need an air fryer. You don't need a waffle machine? No. I have I so many of... questions right now. I know, how? I know. How amazing. What do you even need? I'm going to open that. I okay. usually tear boxes, so and excuse I me. I do also appreciate but the look fact look how sad. Look how amazing that is. Okay. Cool. And then... Oh, so you've got like a type of a silicone exactly. mold to use instead. The mixture also is included in there, so you don't yes. actually need anything. Yeah, you do. You actually do, because you can't put the egg in the box or oh. the cream of the box. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> but but those are, those are um, <laughs> what do you call it, pantry Sta staples? Staples, So we exactly. should have that at home. Yes, I think exactly. uh, that's Can pretty I ask simple. Can to open that? All right, and you know what I was thinking? Also, if you don't really... <gasps> obviously, right. obviously, that's okay. Oh, that's how you open. don't do it, okay. but it's open nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> you pour that in there. All right, And then what in. I was thinking, like if you don't have the... when Once you finish the waffle mix, yeah. you could actually mold chocolate in here. Just melt oh, some nice chocolate. Oh, stop it, Abby. Now you're being naughty. With some sprinkles. Now you're then, being naughty. Then they pop open. You can actually put a little kebab stick in there and make a little chocolate sucker as well. That. So right. that's also a little hint. This is the chocolate powder. This is for the sauce. Okay, let me try this again. The Attempt cream. number two. There we go. <laughs> and then so we're upper. not adding the dry ingredients together. They're going separate yeah, bowls. Yeah, because that's the icing. Oh, that's the yummy course, stuff. Of course, okay. of course. All right, that okay, pops I've got in some there. melted butter here. Yep. Um, just one great free-range egg. See if I can open it properly. Yes. I'm really not doing well with these packet opening skills That's today, okay. but and then we got some it. Milk. eventually and then we came through. And then just a whisk. I've got two whisks. Oh, I've got a whisk for you. All right, put me so to there work. we go. Some cream, some cream and I've got my there. whisk. And then so just... I'm on icing duty. You are on the uh, batter itself, right? Yes, I've okay. got the batter here. So this is exactly what it is Look about, right? So this is the kind of gift that you could share, also make on Valentine's Day. So for that foodie that might be your best friend or a loved one, you could create an experience with each other in the kitchen. And exactly. look at this. Look or you can you put it I. in your lunchbox. Oh, yeah, that's well. true. So hey, the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Nice. Or you can make a whole batch and take them to work and give all your colleagues one, maybe. And well, if you haven't got I, too many colleagues. I'm being silly here <laughs> because it only just dawned on me now yes. that these are actually in the shape of a heart. How did you, cool is that? Did you realize that, guys? Yes, Come on, way, where have yes, yeah. I been? <laughs> All right, well played there. The subtle okay. nuances of love coming through, and I'm absolutely here for it. And Abby's already getting the batter into that, uh, um, what do you call it, a silicone mold? Yes, yeah, silicone. silicone yeah, waffle absolutely, mold. yeah. And, and as I say, you can do the chocolate, you can, yeah. You, you can, can get make, pretty creative with just popping yeah, anything into the exactly, mold, actually. You can yeah. bake it, you could freeze things in here, possibly, too, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe, yeah. That, that jelly, could be quite, yeah, jelly, jelly, yeah, there we go, jelly some hearts, jelly hearts. Anything your heart no. desires. Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> where, where, they, where that came from, <laughs> that's your job. <laughs> you see, the love is just, <laughs> like, <laughs> oozing out of you now. I love it. Okay, and then just give them a little... So get that yeah. spread out quite and then, evenly. Then just pop them in that that um, air fryer that we don't oh, have so on this, set. Oh, so this could go yes, anywhere. Oven, so air fryer thing. So yeah. I'm just going to pop and it I, in the oven over here yeah, for us. Could, We've got some you options. You could actually probably... I haven't tested it in the microwave, oh, but I'm sure you could do a microwave so, version too. So it is going in here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Should I put it in? I'm not sure. <laughs> and okay. Then, and then so one kind of easy. comes out, and mm -hmm. then, yeah, and they just... Um, there you are. I love that. And I love the look and I love the fact that now yeah. you can get creative and add some of your favorite ingredients to exactly. this. Exactly. You can get uh, spruced up with some chocolate or some fruit, you name it. 
Cream would even be nice Cream, on this. Cream, strawberries oh. dipped in chocolate. I oh, mean, those are always it. a favorite stop at Valentine's Day. Stop it, at its finest. And then how's your, how's your... Yeah, I don't know if this is the consistency you were looking for. Oh, no, for. it's got to heat up a little bit. Hey? Oh, OK, yes, so yeah. no row. So you didn't do a good job. Yeah, so that just <laughs> heats up a little bit just to get nice and thick. OK, OK. Um, and then we don't have any more, but anyway, we've got some over there to show. So we will yeah. pretend that I actually did a better job than what I've done right yes, now. Yeah. And essentially what you would get, fast forward into the future, Bum, bum, bum. Exactly. Your beautiful icing all supplied. All you need is your pantry essentials. And that's the waffle kit done and dusted, right? 100%. Maybe it. some icing sugar, big blob of nice tin roof ice cream or pistachio ice cream, even nice. cream and ice cream. You know what I really want to do? What's that? I want to break that fortune cookie with you. Okay, deal. Where is it? There it is. Oh, Look it's at a that. big it's one. It's a giant one. Oh, we're being naughty here. Yeah. Okay, chocolate. yes, please. I didn't and know we could do this. Hopefully, there's something inside I don't think there. we're allowed to, but we're going to do oh, it. Oh, we're going to do Because Ooh. you know what? There's lots, lots. Look how where big it is. From. Whoa, okay. I want to be careful here when I open this up. I don't want to break anything before the moment arrives. So. There we go. Pom, pom. Oh, do you grab like one side each? Look how that big it is. Chocolate? Okay, one, two, three. Ah! Ooh. Did you get anything in it? Um. Any fortunes in yours? Yes? No? Oh, yeah, yes, there we go. there it is. You, mm. you read it out. Okay. Oh, there's, Ooh, there's two. two. All because right. Because it's Valentine's. So, I mean, this is obviously <laughs> one for you. Okay. You are awesome. Don't change. Oh, and another I love one. That. The best is yet to come. Okay, okay. cool. I like I that. I think that can work both ways for both of <laughs> yeah, us. Yeah, this works yeah. for both of us. And yeah. I love the fact that there are two years, so everybody gets something special. Exactly. I yeah. love it. I no love one this. is left out. I'm definitely going to This is absolutely this. perfect. What I did also notice is that there's this uh, sort of a chocolate box that has affirmation cards, yeah. which you can pull out every day and kind of remind yourself of something that relates to love. That is what I'm about. And I'm going to actually just show you right now so see how cool this is. So you can see the first one over here which says, I am grateful for the love I receive from others. But if I was to just remove some of the beautiful chocolates in here, you've got an entire deck. Let me just go through some of this. It's so, so cool. So here's an example. Today, I'm smiling at life, right? Another one, I inspire others, and it keeps going on. I am brave enough to conquer any challenge. So you literally have a stack of affirmation cards here just to incorporate more love into this experience. And I can't thank you enough, Abigail, for highlighting this, for coming through and giving us every reason to share some love, Mzanzi. So I think the only thing for you to remember is to treat the ones you love this Valentine's Day with delicious foodie gifts, like you've seen right now, and treats from Woolworths. And it's available in-store online and, of course, on the app. And you stand the chance to win a 1,000 Rand Woolies gift card. So it's perfect timing to get your gifting on. And all you got to do is reply to the competition post on the Express or Facebook, X or Instagram pages and tell us, how are you celebrating Valentine, Valentine's Day this year? <laughs> and don't forget to use the hashtag Woolies Valentine's. Now, the competition closes midnight, Sunday the 4th of Feb, and your T's and C's can be found at expressoshow.com. All right, let's have some more of this love. What's okay, next? Okay, cool. Shall we eat? <laughs> yes. Shall we eat? Taste one. <laughs> oh, save some love for me. I love those affirmation cards. Well, we are taking the quickest of breaks on your Feel Good Breakfast show. We're going to unpack the color of the year. It's called Peach Fuzz. And then, yes, we can't have a day without a fantastic performance just for you. So we'll see you in just a bit.
You're on S3 and it is your Feel Good Breakfast show. Express to 69 a.m. Monday to Friday where you deserve to be okay, where we bring you everything amazing, everything beautiful. And of course, we're coming to you live from the Johannesburg studio, all in the name of making sure you start off your morning on the perfect note. So this is why I care family. We only bring you superstars. And this morning, I'm talking about a multi-talented man. Not only is he a theater actor, not only is he a voiceover artist, no, one of the things that he is most known for is being a producer, a composer, an artist in general, and honestly and truly just being gifted in every way possible. He is someone who does the things that need to be done. The only Zulu man that matters. I am talking about Mwobi Yabo, everybody! Mwobi <laughs> Uraiti. <laughs> All the better for having you with us. Oh, come on. Oh, please. There's a superstar. And also that voice. Yeah. Oh, do the people run after you when they hear that voice? Do you want to run after me? Ah. Yeah, <laughs> please, please, I'm working here. Come on. All right. <laughs> you've been doing this for so long. Yeah. You started when you were only in grade four, and apparently you were a rapper back then. Yeah. Tell us about that. How did it all begin? Um, yeah, when I came from Emakaya and then coming to Durban uh, in the city, so I figure out a lot of the guys like baby rapper. Mm. You know, um, I could sing, but I could sing. Let me rap drop us because yes. I could write. Well, standing like a little bit of a party. I was like, no, nope, no, nope, sing. Yeah. you know, uh, cover little space, but let me just sing and then give the music one more tool. And you've done exactly that, and yes, so beautifully yes, put yes. because Mobiazo is known all across South Africa <laughs> yeah. and beyond, even actually. Yes, yes. But you also, of course, are a producer. Mm. Why did you think it was important to use Fundisa? Why producer? Uh, making your own sound, you know, Mangabung Fungu's sound, because like some people won't understand what you're getting at. In a CPS card, mm. and the, what type of sound do I need? You know, so those ideas, okay, for me to create my own thing, I need to start producing so that I yes. get an idea. What do I want? Because by now, like, there are a lot of producers, I say, besides the Sandra, some for that, you know, and then man is yes. So now they understand what you prefer, like, what type of beat instrumentals, but in a like from scratch. I love that. Yeah. And I think it's so inspirational that you're able to do all of that. Yes, but yes. speaking of inspiration, mm. where does Mobi Yazo's inspiration come from? It comes from um, I'm a legend, uh, such as Babu Olifam Tukutsi, oh. Kefa Simenya. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Um, uh, Lady Smith Black Mambazo, Babu Shabalala. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it came up and then Patiga Minaga, you know, uh, new school vibes. And then I will put that thing together and then my singers are like a new school music. Yeah. Because I need to accommodate like everyone, even uh, EU, they need to understand like uh, our is coming up here as Africans, mm. you know, because I'm trying to make African culture cool because being African is cool. Uh, it's the coolest, it's does the coolest. even oh, Beyonce yeah. want to be African. Nah, Thank I you mean, very much. Nah, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but in Mobi, yeah. I mean, you are someone who's always been a superstar. Mm. Got to care. I want came to know you because yeah. of the song that you had with A1 Wolf. Yeah, yeah, How did yeah. that come about? Tell us about that song. Uh, A1 Wolf, uh, we, we met, we, I met with A1 Wolf because of my artist in Payana called the uh, company of Baby Zang Wolf Pack. Yes. And then, so, Wolf Pack, me, na. Uh, I show one of the artists and then Bang Bizu uh, must come and record and then cause Gangzo went to go with him and Sketchy Pongo. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. And then we did a song uh, because I love music. I mean, it doesn't say it was a band. Because I like to explore. As much as against sound, the but exploring with other artists, you know, are something totally different yes. from mine. It's really beautiful. And then it clears it from something. Mm. Because you, you guys bring it yes, together yes, so yes, nicely. Yes. Yeah, it's very important. Co collaborations are very important. Yeah. And it was a thing, such as Olifight, mm. uh, Sebenza. Album, the one that I just dropped. So yeah, 
collaborations are beautiful. Speaking of the album, yeah. speak to us about that because I feel like when you put out an offering, sometimes yeah. it can be very nerve-wracking. You don't yeah. know how people are going to perceive it. How has it been and just what was the process in terms of getting into it? Um, I've been working on it uh, for two years now. Sure. Yeah, I help him and then up until so he keep at this year. Yeah. Uh, it's it only because I fell in closing my nerves. Mm. Uh, you know, so yeah. Uh, but it, it's been a very lovely journey, very like in fun this opening journey of this project. New sound, new mobi, like everything new. So yeah. Like testing something and mm. Oh, come on. Yeah. And I think that we are going to be blown away by yeah. it. But Mobi, are you ready to perform for us, my brother? Ah, uh, uh, stop it, Wena. Kini, what do you mean? All right. Um, oh, imagine. <laughs> you see the action. Do you see it? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Everybody, I need you to put some hands together for absolute superstars. I'm talking about Ngobi Yazo, as well as Uolified, because on their way doing the things with Iku Day. <laughs> Oh, Calabar, good. Good as old, you will see them young. Now we go over. Now we go over. Oh, Calabar, good. Good as old, you will see them young. Now we go over. Now we go Bobby Mila, as well, um, Silla, Boga, Lizella. It's a boo, your servants and daughter, boo, your servants and daughter. Bobby Mila, as well, um, Silla, Boga, Lizella. Lampuma, Gona, Gona, Bata, Labo, Batons, over Timing, over Banga, getting it in a mingy, Lunga, Lombard. Sambe kona ba sola me na na ming sola bo na songa kasha zika wa zagiti wa zagiti peni sone zini gaman ah gichelinda ba me na ngakata nzoka talam shanga ngene tuneni ekzine ngomsha shem 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 Hey, then Shupanga, you would tell me, Nanga, I call it. Basu to Barry, Mona, wife on it. Hey, I say, it's got so chule, I manage a pambilla, and it is full of little good. Good as who would see him young. Now I go over, now I go over. Oh, Calabar, good. Good as who would see him young. Now I go Now 
Come on, it is Olified Keta as well as the King Mobiazo. The beautiful thing is that they are sticking around and this is why you've got to stick around as well, Expresso family. Coming up, we're going to be getting into the Pantone color of the year. Have you heard of the color Peach Fuzz? I absolutely love it and I know you will as well. We're going to be talking about incorporating it a little bit later on. But then we're also going to be talking about varsity space must-haves right here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Make sure you do not go anywhere. We're going to be back on the other side of this. Baking is going places you have to see to believe. So tune into Expresso for the Golden Baker Search finale between the top five this 5th to 7th February. I forgot to add the oil. I forgot to add the oil. With a 50,000 Rand grand prize and dream contestants' prizes from Kenwood, catch the Golden Baker Search finale on Expresso, 5 to 7 February, only on S3. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso on S3. And we are diving into creating the perfect varsity comeback. And this is all thanks to game. Now, when I say the varsity comeback, it's all about sprucing up your space, creating the ideal study and relaxation environment, which is absolutely crucial for any university student. And that's why we'll be exploring the must-haves to help you build your dream space. Yeah. I was in res my first year okay. when I went to varsity and I always thought, oh, white bedding, you know, the, 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 the sophist I'm a grown-up. Yeah. It's so impractical. How did that work out? You end up eating on your bed, you study on your bed, you do a lot of things on the bed so you can't have white bedding. Yeah. So that was a hard lesson learned. And I think it's so important because I, I didn't do it the right way. I just had <laughs> distractions. I had like an Xbox and a TV and everything else except the things that helped me study in the room. So we need to come through and change the dynamic here and really encourage you to get your study zen on. And uh, this is why we put this list together for you. So listen up, we are all about the vision of how our perfect space would look, right? We're all about creating it, manifesting it, but there are always these lists of must-haves that we have to include to make it practical as well, right, So That definitely. So I know you didn't have the must-have list. Uh -huh, I didn't. So we are helping you out so you don't end up like Ryle. Uh -huh. Now, 
Eurolux <laughs> student desk lamp is an absolute must. This one's 249 Rand yeah. and it is perfect lighting. You can check out this Eurolux student lamp. It is not only stylish, but it also provides the ideal illumination for those late night study sessions. And the right lamp is so important, mm -hmm. the right light. I'm one of those people, I love a kitchen light when I study, but a, a, a warm, I say kitchen light, I mean the cold Something white. bright and like keeps you awake. Like, yeah, like yeah, it yeah, feels yeah. like you're in a surgery room, that helps, <laughs> keeps me awake. Keep the focus. But then I prefer a soft, you know, the, the, the soft yellow for when Warm it comes lights, to reading yeah. and calming down. So really look into the right lighting for you. And that's really true. The color does impact our space and our mood. Now, let's get into the world of fueling correctly. Now, we're talking about the Defy 120 liter bar fridge, right? It's only 2,399 Rand. It's super cheap. And you can't forget to keep your refreshments close by, right? When you're studying, we need to rehydrate. We need to get those fuel moments in. So this Defy bar fridge is a game changer no more running to the kitchen for those snacks during the study breaks it's compact and it keeps everything chilled so you can literally be at your desk and go Pitchup, grab a drink sip and carry on studying this is efficiency at its finest it is efficiency at its finest even in res my roommate had a fridge oh, and yeah? she was kind enough to let me uh you use. had a proper setup uh, eh? she, she, she she allowed me to have a little space because you know sometimes for me a healthy snack would be yogurt mm. and you need to keep yogurt fresh especially yes. in this heat <laughs> yeah. so definitely get that little fridge Exactly. Now, let's talk about the center, and this is the Koga Toledo desk. Now, this is going for 1,099 Rand. This will be the centerpiece of your study haven. It is your desk, and the Koga Toledo desk is not only sleek, but it's also super functional with enough space for your laptop, your books, and so much more. You can get cute little baskets and put it on those shelves mm. for all your little trinkets, whether it's your stapler, your... I'm one of those girls that had tape and staple and highlighters and stickers. Everything was organized in the right spot but as well. put it in a box and it will look neat. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Look, the desk itself is also pretty compact too, so I can see that fitting into some of those tight spaces that a lot of us have to be crammed into for res. So that is efficiency at its finest. But let's keep the list going on because the HP Desk Jet, which is 499 Rand, is coming up next. Yes, for all the printing, copying, and scanning needs. Yes, those late night submissions of those projects that you've been working on. Well, we've got the HP Print Copy Scan machine that is perfect for you. It's a multitasking marvel and it ensures you're always prepared for those last minute assignments. This is what I needed oh, because I, needed I was that the too. guy that did it right through the night and the early morning. I need to print this. Where do I go? Okay, phone friend, phone friend. <laughs> this would have been so perfect for me, but you can make a better decision than I did and don't make my mistakes. Oh, <laughs> well, listen, these are some of our favorite must-haves and all of these incredible must-haves are available at your nearest game store. Now, you can visit online and in store to transform your varsity experience. And now we want to also hear from you. Tell us on your social media what varsity comeback items is on your your wish list. Yeah, and remember the store opening hours are Monday to Friday from 9 to 6. We've got Saturdays from 9 to 5 and then you public holidays as well as Sundays from 9 to 4. So you've got every reason to get involved in this one. It's time to get your year jacked up, create a space that's tranquil and allows you to get your study zen on. This is one of the most beautiful things about getting into a brand new year is that we get into brand new things. And what I love most is when we are coming out of January, heading on into February, and we get to celebrate these things. So I'm talking about the Pantone color of the year, my friend. Peach Fuzz was named as it for 2024. And I genuinely feel like when we talk about colors, if you put anything peach near me or with me or on me, it, I'm just, I'm such a happy person. And I don't want to get this wrong, right? They've apparently described this specific color as being a velvety gentle peach tone whose all-embracing spirit embraces the mind, body, and soul, which sounds so delicious to me. And this is the thing, we're not just breaking this down. No, no, we have someone who is actually qualified to do so. So you don't have to just worry about my opinion. Now, we have got one of the most incredible interior designers in Johannesburg who has done some of the most amazing works all throughout the years. I am talking about Rita Pike, everyone. Let's welcome her to the show. Rita, how are you? Good, thank you. I am amazing, thank you. Rita, speak to us about this color. Is this something that, you know, for you, you're like, yes, this is most definitely a color of the year, something that stands out? It is my favorite color. Oh. It has always been. Yes. Um, if you look at 
the sunset every night. Mm -hmm. When yellow becomes orange, yeah. that is the tones. And I love to bring the evening into my home. Yes. I like to put my home to bed. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> yes. And put on all the bright lights, mm -hmm. put on lamps. Mm -hmm. And that is basically your tones. And it is, to me, it is so rejuvenating. He also said mm -hmm. that it's because of the times that we're living in after COVID Indeed. and continue to live in that this is such an important colour. And, yeah. you know, every colour has a wavelength and it's rejuvenating. Yeah. So you rest. I think it's a good time for everybody to declutter, yeah. organise their lives. Mm. And you know what? If you get up in the mornings again, then this colour you see again because the orange then becomes softly the yellow. yellow and oh. you see this beautiful peachy tone, so it's also restoration. Oh, wow. You're, uh, this is why you are an interior designer, my lovely. You find the messages in absolutely everything. I love that. <laughs> but Krita, yeah. speak to us about your work. Before we delve on into this color some more, peach fuzz, because we have a lot to get into it about, I want to know, what are some of the greatest memories and fondest memories that you have in terms of being an interior designer? My best memory mm -hmm is the fact that I had dreams as a young girl. Yeah. I used to sit in my school hostel room mm. and I didn't be, buy sweets. I bought, bought the Rue Rose every two weeks. Yeah. And I would cut out pictures oh. of decor, yes. food as well. And I had a scrapbook. And you know, if you dream, mm. you push when the opportunity comes. Yeah. And I can really witness that I bought old houses mm. on no budget. I gutted it, I renovated it. I had the most stunning people buying my places. I met Elon Musk because of that. Okay, his girl. His mother. <laughs> <laughs> yes. she, her budget was as bad as mine. Oh, hectic. And she said to me, please just do a makeover in my house. Oh. You know, so we decluttered, we put newspapers, double page newspapers to be able to walk and just used whatever she had in the house yeah. because she was a single mom, mom and you know I didn't even know how to spell computer at that time <laughs> yeah. and he was building these computer games yeah. but it was such a blessing being in the house and using what she had. Yes. Krita, you must tell everyone you're Elon Musk's best friend. Don't I'm listen not. to them. I'm not. No, just tell them. Don't worry. Just like, you know. Yeah, yeah. But Krita, I mean, I feel like with you saying people invite you into their homes and they say, please make this work. Yeah. What's been a color for you where somebody said, please make it work and it was terrible, but you had to do the best that you could? Oh, my word. Yellow painted walls uh -huh. and a red couch that was brand new. <laughs> yes. And there's nothing wrong with yellow and red. It's just not my favorite colors. I get that. <laughs> and I get just having to mix them together. But let's go back now to the color of the year. I mean, 2024, like you said, the CEO of the Pantone he said that this is something that is just such a huge way to look at when we are living in the times that we do. And this color speaks to exactly that. But now, if I'm looking at this color, how can I incorporate it into my home and incorporate it into my space even when we look at people? Each fuzz. One must be very careful with colour. Okay. There's a rule and everybody follows it and it doesn't work for people. Mm. The rule is 60%, 30% and 10%. Okay. In this case, 10% in your room because, you know, you can't every year change mm. your colour scheme. Mm. So I would work with the pitch as an accent, but one must be so careful because the reason why so many homes doesn't have this personality, it's cold, it's cool, yeah. it's just too neutral, is because people don't use contrast. Mm -hmm. It's very good to contrast um, cool colours with warm colours. Oh, okay. Or also to, to get a paint chart, maybe at Builder's Warehouse, then you look at the paint chart, What's the colors next to it? I the like that. The biggest sin mm. is to mix and match, and everything must match, and everything must be the same tone. You get such a flat interior. Yes. You must always use 
dark versus light. And this is why the yellow and the red made you very angry, because it was just clashing everywhere. Yeah, to me it's clashing, yes. but it's smart personality. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. One last thing I want to ask you, please, my Rita, is just to anyone out there who wants to use this color, what do you say to them in terms of just allowing themselves to be bold? I think that I must use it because it's a trendy colour, mm. I think they must use it in living areas. Yes. Use it in the kitchen, use it in the dining room, use it in the living room. Yes. Um, at night when you switch on your lamps, please put out all bright lights. Mm. Have a lampshade that picks it up. You know, oh, you nice. get lampshades all over the show, very reasonable. Look at scatter cushions and you know you must always when you, when you have a scatter cushion, yes. you must always hit it so that it... <laughs> <laughs> we are looks... beating our scatter cushions, yes. <laughs> yeah. So you basically beat your scatter, but use shades of, you know, of, yes. of peach. Of peach, and like that. To, com to combine it with candlelight, to combine it with a fire in the fireplace. And just those nice tones of that peachy vibe. Yeah, beautiful serviettes. Yes. You don't have to have more than 8%. I love that. And I love your work, Krita. I mean, having worked with Elon Musk and his family, uh, we are very lucky to have <laughs> you. Thank you so much for coming through. Pleasure. Her name is Krita Pike, and she is an interior designer, one of the people who is doing the most in that industry in Johannesburg and beyond. But it is, of course, all in the name of celebrating the Pantone color of the year, Peach Fuzz. For now, though, my beautiful Peach Fuzz, the beautiful Zoe, she's standing by in the lounge. Oh, That's what, a cute nickname. What, what about me? What about me? About Peach Fuzzy. <laughs> Listen, I love that inspiration. I'm definitely being inspired by that color palette too. I'm going to try and incorporate that into my world. But what I want you to incorporate into your world is an upgrade. And that's to upgrade to hyperfiber, uncapped home internet. And starting from only 244 Rand per month. What? Yes, you heard correctly. And you stand a chance to be one of five lucky customers to win one month free unlimited Wi-Fi and uninterruptible power supply units. And you can choose a school of your choice to win free Wi-Fi for a year. This is incredible. It really is. Now to enter WhatsApp 064-097-8822. That number's on your screen right now. And tell us your power outage story. Follow the prompts and hashtag power up with hyper. The competition will close on the 7th of February. So get those entries in. There are T's and C's that apply. Yeah, now there's so much to still look forward to in a feel-good breakfast show. We've still got another hour of magic coming through. We've got Moshe and DK coming through in the studio. So bring on the fun, eh? And yeah. then we're also bringing on some more love. Yeah, indeed. Definitely. We want to get you ready for all of the date nights that you're looking forward to. Taron Oppel is coming around with all the outfits. So we, we, you're going to be really inspired after this. So stay Definitely. tuned. <laughs> Double cream plain yogurt from Clover. Just plain amazing. It's my feel-good breakfast show. 
Yes, Mzanzi, welcome back. It's your Feel Good Breakfast Show and an incredible two hours have already gone by. Where have you been? But don't worry, you got one more hour of magic coming right up on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. But before we do anything, official duties must commence and it's about to go on the hour. And that means Zoe standing by with the latest in news headlines. Thank you, Ryle. Well, let's start off with your national headlines. The public prosecutor, Kuleka Kaleka, says there is an increasing number of complaints that members of parliament submit to her office against fellow members. She says the complaints and grievances can mostly be resolved within the respective political parties. She says these complaints lead to delays and resources can instead be used for complaints from the public. Kaleka says speaking at a two-day summit at the SA legislative sector in Cape Town. And staying with our local news, the Electoral Commission says the voters list has passed the 27 million mark for the first time. The chief electoral officer says in the 2019 election there were 26.7 million registered voters. Eligible voters can register at polling stations on Saturday and Sunday or check their details. This year voters must vote at the polling stations where they registered. Registration can continues until President Cyril Ramaphosa announces the voting date. We now move to news abroad. Ethiopia's premier says the first aircraft built in Ethiopia in 1935 has been handed back to the country by Italy. It had been taken during Italy's fascist era during the occupation of what was then a bassina and eventually going on display in the Italian Aviation Museum in Rome. It was formally returned to Prime Minister Abe Ahmed at a ceremony in Rome and he said this marked a day of great pride for the country. The green, red and yellow aircraft is said to have been named after then-Emperor Halle Selassie's daughter. And Hamas is studying a new proposal to pause the fighting in the Gaza Strip. Hamas has been invited to discuss a framework set out by Israel, the US, Qatar and Egypt proposing a six-week truce during which more Israeli hostages would be exchanged for Palestinian prisoners. Meanwhile, the head of the UN aid agency says the suspension of funding to the Palestine Refugee Agency, or UNRWA, has catastrophic consequences for the residents of Gaza. Some of UNRWA's staff members were allegedly involved in the October 7th attack on Israel. And South African superfan Mama Joy clinched the Fan of the Match award during the clash against Morocco on Tuesday, which Bafana Bafana won by two goals to nil. Known for her unwavering support, Mama Joy, whose real name is Joy Choke, rocked the stands with her vibrant outfit, stealing the spotlight as always. Despite recent criticism suggesting she favoured rugby over soccer, Mama Joy's silent doubters with her fever and cheer, dancing and colourful attire, earning praise even from opposing fans. The Confederation of African Football commended her spirited attire on Twitter, saying Mama Joy, adorned in SA's iconic green and yellow proved once again that her loyalty to Bafana Bafana knows no bounds, winning hearts and accolades alike. Well, on that joyous note, that's where I leave your headlines. Let's take a final look at your sport. Thank you so much, Yo Zoe. Let's dive straight into all things sport one last time. And yes, elation after last night's game where Liverpool dazzled at Anfield. Trouncing Chelsea Ch Christopher Nkunku's efforts for Chelsea, Luis Diaz sealed at the deal. And Jurgen Klopp's squad now holds a solid five-point lead atop the Premier League with a showdown against Arsenal looming on Sunday. Well, from our football news, we dive into cricket headlines and Quena Mbapaka's stellar performance led South Africa's under-19 to a dominant nine-wicket victory against Zimbabwe's under-19s. Now, Mbapaka's five-wicket all restricted Zimbabwe to 102 runs and in a swift response, South Africa chased down the target in 13.3 overs, securing 103 runs with just one wicket down. Now, this win boosts the Proteas under-19 net run rate, placing them second in the standings, ahead of West Indies in the race for a semi-final spot. 
Well, carrying on with uh, cricket headlines and sunrises, Eastern Cape dominated the Joburg Super Kings with a resounding nine-wicket bonus point victory at the Wanderers in the SA20. Now, the Sunrisers bowlers set the tone, restricting Super Kings to a mere 78 runs. And in a swift response, David Milan's unbeaten 40 runs not out and Tom Abel's 26 runs not out propelled Sunrisers to victory in the 11th over, losing only one wicket along the way. Now, this win secures their spot in the SA20 playoffs. Well, lastly, we move over to Formula One news. And the Formula One has rejected Andretti's bid to join the circuit, expressing concerns over the team's competitiveness. Now, Andretti, led by Mario and Michael Andretti, aimed to be F1's 11th team from 2025 or 2026. But Formula One stated that an 11th team must add value through competitiveness, and Andretti's application fell short. However, a potential entry in 2028 is not ruled out, aligning with General Motors' plan to produce its engine for Andretti. Well, we definitely look forward to that event taking place. But for now, though, a lot of you motoring on the roads, let's see what we can do for you when it comes to all things traffic. Thank you, Raul. Let's start with traffic in Midrand, Johannesburg. There's a vehicle broken down on the N1 southbound. It's at Olefantsfontein Road. The middle lane is affected, causing heavy congestion. If you're in Belleville, in Cape Town, there's some congestion. And this is on the N1 inbound at Durban Road. Expect delays and allow for more travel time. Staying in the Western Cape, there is an overturned truck on the N1 route. It's before Worcester. Exercise caution when approaching the affected area. It is causing heavy delays. Delay, so please add additional travel time. That's your traffic. Let's take a final look at your weather. And while fires and flare-ups continue wreaking havoc in the Western Cape and firefighters are fighting a fierce battle to bring matters under control, comes a warning from the SA Weather Service that extremely high fire danger conditions are still expected over the Western Cape today. The same forecast applies for the western parts of the Northern Cape and this will be exacerbated by extremely uncomfortable and very hot conditions which are expected in places over the Western Cape, mainly the interior, until tomorrow. Moreover, the heat wave in places over the Sara Bartman and Chris Harney district municipalities, as well as the Raymond Mshlaba and Amashlati local municipalities in the Eastern Cape, is expected to continue until Saturday with persistent high temperatures. Before we get into your temperatures for today, let's take a final look at your sunrise view. This one was sent in by Nzwana Mshlana from Durban. Look at that ocean and the sunrise peeking through the cloud cover. Oh, what a beautiful way to start the day. Well, if you would love to share your morning view with us, do so on our WhatsApp line. That number is 063-408-8863. Here are your temperatures for your Thursday. It's heating up in South Africa and so is the show. But what's more important is the fact that if you are passionate about the game, then you can use your sport know-how to predict match day results and claim your share in today's 
Sports Day Jackpot! <laughs> yes, it's going down and it's your chance of winning big, which could become a reality off the pitch. I can't wait for this. I didn't know if it was even a thing. Where have I been? Well, you can now play your favorite Sports Day game on the National Lottery.co.za's website. So make sure to play now and stand a chance to earn bragging rights to be in your game. Oh, yes, indeed. Now, that is something that's getting me excited, but there's even more to look forward to on your Feel Good Breakfast show because, yes, our celeb of the day is here and she is bringing on all the funny. So Mush is coming through. Joba is going to be chatting to her and I know it's going to be a great conversation. So oh. that's something to look forward to indeed. <laughs> Amazing. Well, listen, we also want date night looks. So we're going to sort mm. you out this Valentine's Day or in fact, for any date night throughout the month of love. So stay tuned. It's my feel-good show. There's honestly nowhere else you'd rather be than right here on S3. Why, my friend? Well, because we only ever bring you the best. I must tell you over and over again so you understand, okay? So actually, let me not even just tell you, let me show you. I am talking about the fact that we've got a superstar in the building, live from the Johannesburg studios. I know everyone's going to make a noise because we all want to ask for his <laughs> autograph. Like, we're just <laughs> obsessed. One of the most incredible entertainers in South Africa, one of the funniest people you will meet. He's an actor, he's an MC. He is a reality TV star and so many more other things. I am talking about the incredible Mushandiki. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Moshe, how are you? I am too good to be true, too fresh to flow. Come all on. the time, you know. Um, and, yes. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm feeling good. 2024. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful year. Slow start, but yes. yeah, it's very, yeah, it's, pro it's promising. You deserve everything beautiful, Moshe, because I feel like you've been giving the world so much of yourself from the beginning, 2013, when you started yeah. posting YouTube videos. Um, Babes, please tell me very quickly, how did that, you know, really just make you Moshe that you are today in the way that we don't understand? And how did all of the opportunities come about? You know what, um, I think it's, you, 2013 Moshe is not so different than 2024 Moshe. Okay. Um, just a bit more wiser. Um, with a beard. I love that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, other than that, like, um, I, it just says I've, I've always had one thing, uh, one message and one mantra mm. for myself each and every year with life, career, sometimes relationships. Uh -huh, if you uh -huh. put your mind to it, um, you can definitely do it. Yeah. You, like, your mind is the most incredible I don't know whether they did pool or again. Powerful. Source of income. Hey, we're not. Yes. Um, so 
even when I did, um, even when I lost myself on YouTube, I could have never fathomed. I knew that I was, uh, this is what, this is the life I wanted. I knew yeah. this is the career path, hence I studied it. But um, I never knew how, mm. you know, it, it, it's, it's always, I, get, I always get what I want, but it's the only, it's, it's the how. It's the how. It's and, the how. But that's what faith is about, is it not? Right. Just knowing that it's going to happen. It's going to happen, but how? Yeah, you, and yeah, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, yo, I want a Lamborghini. How? Uh, how? Don't worry. <laughs> Mujer, it'll find itself to you, my love. I so wish. 100%. I so wish. But, my babes, I feel like you are the minister of YouTube because you are the one who led everybody in that direction. Really? Like, you were doing actually, it before everyone. Yes, yes. actually, actually. Um, but you know what? Seeing how we have grown, how mm. content creators and content creation as a whole has grown from skits and seeing more um the faces like mine because i remember when my friend was like put it on youtube i was like on youtube like i won't your team mm. but I, like i go on youtube to watch britney spears your fiance yes. your whatnot your whatnot and then it was like no actually just upload a video it's really easy and i uploaded it and i'm seeing so much more local content right now yeah. and i absolutely love it absolutely love my favorites at the moment yes. Sissin Tato, um ck soys or so is ck something like that and just seeing more people like me musha this is the thing about you and you like to put people on musha might as well be my minister of finance because he always calls and he'll be like listen i've got this opportunity listen this is that and that <laughs> and who you are it, it literally it, it literally is because i there's, there's, there's a lot of there's the, the pie is big it man. Is the, big. the pie is big even if you get your three quarter there you get a crumb there or whatnot you got some you got some Something, of the time. You got some of the time. Hundred percent. But then speak to us about this because I feel like people are always talking about opening up the industry, yeah. right? Why is it so important for not just the industry to open, but rather for people to have mentors such as yourself, yeah. who's done so incredibly well for himself, you know, that are able to kind of navigate them or rather help them navigate this really crazy space. Um, so that you don't have to it's, it's important so that you don't have to go through the hardships that I went through. Mm -hmm. When I entered the industry, no one was telling me about, okay, Moshe, do this. No, Moshe, charge oh. that. Uh, Moshe, go to this person. Mm. And, 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 like, no, no one was doing that because also it was a very weird transition. But, okay, cool, you're on YouTube. But I was like, no, I studied TV presenting. Yes. I studied, um, um, I've got my PA in dramatic arts. So what's happening? So um, it's very important so that it takes shorter, yeah. you know. Um, not that but there's any shortcuts. Yeah. It's, it's really not a shortcut. And I'll always um, also thank Pearl Tusi for putting me on um, in terms of radio, because mm. I'd like sneak into Metro FM <laughs> and be like, okay, cool. So how do I work the desk? I and, love and, that. and lo and behold, three years, four years later, I was on Metro yeah. FM. So um, it's literally a matter of preparation and guidance. It's very important that we bring the ladder down mm -hmm. because I, I'm not going to be doing, um, I'm not going to be presenting i think for the next uh, for the next 20 years yeah i hear um, that uh, 10 years there uh, if i yeah, yes, uh, yes, i've got yes. it then i'm a late night show for like five years oh come on you know, okay but, you know, but like, <laughs> from, from 45 i i just wanna you are in front of pants and eat money man. babes and you that's what you deserve you wanna uh, be right. on a yacht in dubai <laughs> you wanna live you know and i wanted to be my yacht not a rented yacht, <laughs> yeah. not a rented yacht. why are you coming my for yacht. people what if you wanna rent huh? Okay, it's fine. Like, I love this. It's because I love I'll be owning mine. Yes. Yeah. But Moshe, I mean, I feel like when we talk about people who are genuinely just continuing to rise, you're one of those people. Yeah. Which is why I then want to ask you, why do you love what you do? What is it that feeds your soul about this entertainment thing? You know what? Uh, funny enough, I had this conversation with my mom just the other day, and she mm -hmm. was speaking about, you know, um, awards and whatnot. Yes. Um, and I was like, you know what? I, I have done so many shows, uh, gotten some awards and, 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 but for me, even when I'm nominated, it's like, oh, yay. Um, when I win, oh, yay. But when I get the opportunity to go to work, when I get yeah. that call sheet, when it says call time and it's got my name on it, At that's, a, you know, and, and I'm just like, <laughs> yay, you know, yay. like that, that's where my real reward is. Yeah. And I, I, I just love it. I, I love um, I think I love having an impact on people's lives, oh. whether it's making them laugh, whether unintentionally making them cry because of something. Uh, if I did an emotional episode, yes. um, 
I just, I, I, I love it because it can also reach so many people. Mm. The positive message can reach so many people in this terms, in terms of the shows that we do, yeah. the energy that we bring, with the energy that you bring on set. Yeah. It's just like, yo, what's up, guys? You know, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. It is beautiful. And with you even saying that, Musha, do you understand your power? No, I, I, I don't like to get high off my own supplies. So. Okay. <laughs> okay, honey, I see that. Musha, before I let you go, because yeah. you are just a ball of everything we need Yo. in the morning, <laughs> what can we expect from you in 2024? Um, my reality show um, mm -hmm. on Sundays. Please do check it out on my socials. Yes. Um, and literally pictures of me posting my kids this whole year. <laughs> I'm literally going to be spending so much time with my boys this year. It's, um, I've even taken off like the month of February Aww. just to be a stay-at-home dad. Daddy Mushi. Yeah, besides the times when I just go for a massage and... and, and uh, what you yeah, deserve? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, I mean, and a cocktail I here I was going to say, day. you're going out with friends as well. You uh, deserve. You know, it's tough to be a dad. Yeah, you know, so yes. I'm, I'm literally just going to be with my kids uh, most of the year and doing a whole lot of things uh, behind the scenes this year. Beautiful. Please cast me. D don't worry, I got Thank you. you. Okay, all right. I, I, I got you. You've Thank got my name. I've got Caroline. you. I've Caroline. 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 You've I've got, got you. You know this jacket. You know it. His name is Mushendi. Nikki, one of the most loved personalities in South Africa, but one of the people who genuinely is just so gifted when it comes to each and every part of entertainment. My friend, I told you the best, didn't I? Right about now, though, we're cooking up a little something in the kitchen, and of course, it's being done by Ral and Zoe. Yeah, we definitely cooking up, up something in the kitchen right now, but I'm loving that conversation you just had. Thank you so much for coming through this, Anelia and Moshe. I'm looking forward to the rest of your year. It sounds like it's going to be absolutely incredible. Everybody's going to be watching. But for right now, though, the Pantone color of the year for 2024 is peach furs. And it captures our natural desire to nurture ourselves and others. And its gentle peach tone embraces and enriches the mind, the body, and the salt. So, to celebrate this color, we are making peach galette, the encapsulation of warmth, radiance, and the essence of this Pantone all coming together in a delicious meal. And this pastry that we're putting together is so easy to work with, especially when it's cold. But before we get into that, let's talk about the hero ingredient that Zoe is already prepping up for us. What's I'm happening on your side? Chopping up some peaches. I mean, it is stone fruit season. Mm. I'm a lover of stone fruit, especially yeah. when it's fresh, it's in season, it's sweet it's affordable and i'm quite excited for us to whip this little galette together yeah so uh you've already got some of the wedges cut up and that's obviously our first step in this uh, recipe so uh this is the for me the most exciting part because i love 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 this fruit and especially when you incorporate it into somewhat of we can call this a dessert right yes yeah this is definitely on the dessert when side. you pop it in a dessert mm, it just gets even better so we've got our beautifully cut up wedges from zoe now what we're going to do is kind of like baste this right so we're going to use some melted butter just to baste these up i'm going to get my washed hands in here to get it all massaged up why are we basting this though because that's pretty weird right well no it's not <laughs> because what is happening next is we're going to take some of this beautiful vanilla essence just to give it some flavor and add a little add bit of extra base you, oh yeah to bring make it life on. a little exciting nice and then what we're going to be doing is coating these in a weird sort of a batter but not just any batter we're using some brown sugar so i'll use about half of the brown sugar and I'm going to use my fingers just to make sure it breaks up and gets a good basting on because if you've worked with brown sugar before you can uh, be aware of the fact that it does kind of clump up every now and then when it gets moist but this one's looking good all right oh, I'm happy with this. And you want this. it to stick to the fruit because that's mm. going to give it that caramelization yeah. when it goes into the oven and we've got our puff pastry here it is ready and the whole thing with the galette is you really just want to enfold it fold it the the, the pastry into your ingredients. Okay, so it's almost like a, a fold over bread, focaccio <laughs> style thing. And uh, what we've got here are beautiful. Do we get pop all of this in? Pop all of oh, it in. Wow, Let's see how crazy. much we can get in there. So we've got our lovely coated peaches with some melted butter and vanilla essence that's gone in there. Now Zoe's doing the, the neat, tricky fold over part. I'm gonna try. Yeah. I have a feeling our, our ingredients might pop over. We're a bit generous here with our peaches. A lot more peaches, yes, than the recipe did advise, but we're not complaining about that. And I do think the pastry will rise. Yes. So hopefully it rises to the occasion and matches up the level of the peaches and then we have a perfect symphony right there. Nice folds. Look at that. Yeah, like and that. then we're going to finish it off <laughs> with some nuts. Some nuts and then... Uh, some 
almonds. I see we've got some eggs still left over and apricot jam. What on earth is that for? So the egg, we're just going to give it a little bit of a brush. In oh, okay, fact, that's let's for the pastry, give, right? Yeah, for the pastry. I'm just going to use a little fork to get our little eggy I'll whisk that up first, yeah. all whisked up. And then if you can have the honors of doing the brushing along sure, the pastry for us. Sure, because I've already got some us. dirty hands. Oh, actually, let me do you that. Sure? Let me okay, help cool. you there. I'll wash mine so long because okay. there's another step coming up. There we go. And you just give the pastry a nice little brush. Okay. And then this will go into the oven, 180 degrees, and you are, you've got a yummy dessert. Beautiful way. And you can see just a light little brush that will give it that beautiful golden finish. Mm -hmm. And we've got some apricot jam here. So when it comes out nice and hot, you can actually use some of this apricot and just coat over the peaches. Oh, like a just drizzle to, or a coating. Nice. It will give it yeah, an yeah, additional yeah. sweetness, a beautiful finish, and that glossy look so that you are ready to serve it. You can just finish it off with a little bit of icing sugar and you're good to go. Oh, it looks like it's coming out of a restaurant. That is the quality that we came for. And really surprised yeah. at how easy that actually was. It's uh, something that can seem overwhelming, especially when you get into the world of baking, but nice job. Pop that in the oven and voila, you're absolutely set to show off with your guests, show off uh, these beautiful color palettes and these tones that we're using. As you've heard, 2024, it's all about those sort of peach crimson sunset moods that we're serving. And this has hit the nail on the head. Well played, so I'm oh. very impressed with this one. I do think when we, we, if we redo it, I actually think we need to fold the peaches underneath. I think we just like, I folded the edges. So next time I'll just <laughs> it's put, fine. put I, the pastry I, higher. I think it's still going to taste good though. Oh, well, look, there's a lot to still look forward to. Of course, we've just finished up in the kitchen. I think this is our last recipe for the day, but we've got lots more ingredients coming at you right now. We've got something to look forward to when it comes to gift ideas for Valentine's Day. I think you're going to be going through some looks, right? We are going to sort you out for date night. Mm. Taryn Opal is on standby with a railing of clothing and we're going to make sure you are perfect for whether you're going to the movies or staying at home. Yeah, that's a good idea. I've still got to think of what I'm actually going to be doing for my Valentine's Day. I know how we're going to look because we're going to get sorted by the show, but what are we going to do as well? That's a conversation for another time. For now, though, let's get excited because it's time to get our best dressed Valentine's Day look sorted. We'll see you after this. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. You're just in time because the day of love, it always seems to hit you out of nowhere, but we're going to make sure you are as prepared as possible. And the biggest question on your mind is usually, what am I going to wear when you head out on a date? Now, to help you immerse yourself in the romantic occasion, Woolworths has you covered with 
all of the best Valentine's Day looks. And here to take us through the Love Fault collection is stylist and creative director, Taryn Opal. It's so great to Good have you morning. here. We are here for the warm, fuzzy reds, pinks, love yes, feels. Yes, we are. All, all the love it. feelings. Yes. All of it. <laughs> Tell me when it comes to getting ready for that date night. Some of your favorite tips to keep in mind when selecting an outfit. Oh, I think there's like one main one that I really want to touch on and that is planning ahead because I don't know about you but we've all been in a pile of clothes and shoes going I have nothing to wear mm -hmm. and you have to leave home in like six and a half minutes um, but you know luckily for us Woolies has us covered because they've got a new Valentine's Day collection oh. that'll help us you know in the right direction um, and you know I think that the other thing you need to remember is you need to pick something that makes you feel confident and mm. look confident um, and what better color than red it's powerful it oozes confidence you know even if you don't feel it you'll see it. Okay, well, you are wearing that red. Do you mind standing up for us sure. and getting a little bit of model? Because I've never thought of putting pink and red together. That's the thing. So I think when you look at a color wheel, pink and red live in the same family. So that's why it does work together. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm obviously wearing red for Valentine's Day. Who wouldn't? Um, it's like the obvious choice. And I've deconstructed a red suit that Woolworths actually has um, by contrasting with my black pants and my pink top, just to switch just it up a little bit. Just to show you, you can switch it up and you can change it up. Now you've brought a railing along yes, for you, I so have. let's have a look at what's available okay. for the ladies and the men heading into date yes. night. Yes, so like I mentioned, lots of red going on. We've got a lot of slinky, silky fabrics, um, which lend itself to an evening out. This is also a little bit sort of dressed down as well with a little drawstring. Feels a bit tracksuity, but mm. not. But not, um, it's and yeah, and This is the top that I'm wearing, the pink one. Oh, I um, love that We've pink. touched on the blazer and we're gonna see it a little bit later again, so I'm not gonna give too much away there. But another hot pink item is the bodycon dress with a little bit of drapery in the front, which is really beautiful and feminine. Um, sort of hides all the bits that you don't wanna see. Love That's that. That's what you want. You wanna feel confident. You wanna go onto that date yes, night. Just, just like enjoy yourself. Feeling and looking your best. You're feeling you don't... comfortable. You're not like, tugging on your clothes and going. And oh. you can enjoy the bread. So if you get bloated, you want the <laughs> dress matter. that will cover it. Doesn't matter. Um, and then another sort of standout in the collection is this floral print, but a mix of red and pinks. Again, little slinky silky vibe coming through. I love that. Let me hold that. Bring that pink shirt. Is it too much pink if with this? No, 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 no. So no. the whole idea is to wear it all together. No, that's actually really great. And the red shirt. So this is like a is like a mini capsule, or am I going a no, bit you too can, crazy? No, you can totally mix and match. Absolutely. But what's great about these pieces as well is you can think beyond Valentine's Day. Pair this with a flat sack in the daytime I mean this does lend itself more to evening but I can see that with a little bit of a sandal and a, and a t-shirt and maybe I can in the picture day. this as the seasons change with a cute little cardigan or a little polo exactly neck. transseasonal yes love that, I love that. <laughs> so that's an option and then I mean if we aren't going out because there are going to be some of us that aren't I mean you've got the little hard print I can see a bit of a binging of a series on a couch at mm. home with a significant other maybe very um, cute so there's also the heart print and then let's talk about men so before, we, before you get into the men should we bring our lady our oh model gosh, out so because we've got we've got models on standby and look at this red okay. on red on red so this is the ultimate suit i was talking about um Another little quick, nice tip that I like to give people is to go like one or two sizes up in your blazer because it makes it feel a lot more relaxed. Um, she's wearing the tapered trouser with a little bit of lace and a heel. So, so wait, is she wearing underwear? Like she some, is some wearing lingerie? underwear as outerwear, which is... You know, is that a thing? That's it's a such thing a now. thing. It's such a thing. And I mean, she's still covered up and it's not too revealing. And I mean, her blaze is quite oversized, so it makes it feel very sophisticated. How fun. But I mean, like I said, we love versatility beyond Valentine's Day. Wear the suit to the office, mm. paired with a sneak and a t shirt for a movie night, maybe. Brunch with the girls. You can wear that blazer with denims. You can break the blazer. That's the same blazer you're wearing. Same blazer. I've just paired and you mine paired with, with black, black pants. pants. Yeah. Oh. I love that. So Absolutely that's love that. Ladies sorted. Let's put the spotlight on the pick. men. Okay, so <laughs> men. Um, I really want to touch on these because these are new styles coming through for men. Um, it's their sort of boxy pocket button through jackets. This one is probably my favorite. It's the Melton um, sort of 
fabric fabrication, uh, which is great for next season. But also if nights get a little bit cooler, just throw it over your t-shirt. And it's a nice alternative to a blazer. True. Because I feel like, you know, we, we always tend to go for a blazer, but you could pair this with a suit pants. It's a very nice in-between because if you look at most men's wardrobe, I look at my husband's, he's got the blazers and he's got the, the sporty jackets. The, yes. The, 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 yes, yeah, so you know, this the is like an in-between. typical jacket that every Cape Tonian wears. So if those two had a baby, this is what you would get. That's what you would get. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, so those are great to pair with your denims, your chinos, your suit pants, all of that. But, you know, if we are the sort of you know, guy who wants to wear a suit, because you will always find those be like, no, suit or nothing. They also have really great um, check prints. This is a very nice light and airy one, just paired with a t-shirt, keeps it a little bit smart, casual. Um, and then again, you know, your white shirts, you've got collars, collarless, uh, golfers. So there's a lot to mix and match to sort of bring your look together in a way that you want. Oh, and that's what you want. You want that versatility when it comes to choosing items for your wardrobe. Now we've brought a male model along. We have. So we've got Daniel here. He's wearing um, the button through pocket jacket in the black. Um, and he's paired his with the suit pants. So this is what I was talking about, that it, it still feels like a suit, but it's a little bit more smart casual, paired with a black sneaker, makes it feel, you know, like and it's all tied wearing together. a simple T-shirt. Simple white T-shirt. Okay, but we've got to show them your socks, Donnell, because now he is <laughs> Valentine's uh, <gasps> theming over here with his love socks. Oh, which is those a are little, fun. A little touch um, of Valentine's Day, but of course, you know, each to their own, if, you, if that's what's your thing, all good. But I mean, yeah, you could swap his sneakers out with a pair of loafers that you have next to you there. Oh, beautiful loafers, yeah. Beautiful loafers, and then adding that blazer then takes it up a notch to a more formal look. Mm, well, these loafers are also a great addition to his outfit. I love that you have versatility. I think gone are the days where you just have your workwear clothing and you just have your date night clothing and you just have your everyday clothing. We now get to mix and match and really get yeah, and value just, and for our money. Exactly. I was just going to say value for your money. You want to be clever about your spending and not just, you know, I know we're talking about Valentine's Day today, but I just want to, you know, emphasize that this isn't solely for Valentine's yeah. Day and you can wear it for beyond, any other day beyond definitely, that definitely this is just a collection that we brought to you now Taryn thank you for joining us today you, and if you want to be in a love bubble of your own when wearing a stylish date night look with Woolworths you can shop the latest styles perfect for Valentine's Day and beyond shop this and more in store online as well as on the Woolies app Oh, absolutely inspired by that one. And it's not just Valentine's Day that I'm looking forward to, but it's the entire month we can incorporate red and really showcase our love. Now, we chatted to you this morning. Uh, well, before we even chatted to you, we were making some delicious desserts, and I'm going to just get on that while I chat to you right now. But like I said, we were chatting to you about Valentine's Day, what special plans you had for Valentine's Day, and special gifting ideas. But we wanted the wrong answers for this one, and a lot is happening right now. But I'm going to just prepare myself for this one before I read these tabs because it's going to get funny and it's going to get interesting. So let me grab my version of popcorn, which is this dessert instead, and uh, tuck away these comments. So let's see, Mzanzi, what you all had to say. We've got lots of comments coming through thick and fast. First up, we've got Savvy Peruma, who says, Good morning, Espresso Morning Show team, to be just happy and loved unconditionally. And then she says, Hmm, a bunch of roses will add to my day. So... I don't know about the funny part. That's not a wrong answer. That's a right answer. That sounds amazing, actually. So we're not going to complain about that one. But we do have more comments to read through right now. So let's see who's up next on our list. It looks like we've got Teresa Maiko who says, Good morning, my favorite beautiful espresso fam. The perfect gift for my Valentine is quality time. And a box of chocolates is a bonus. All right, another worthy gift coming through there. And I think something that's definitely going to add to the moments of love that come through on that day. Now we've got Ntokona or Ntak corner who says morning fam espresso show the best gift for me would be anything as long as it comes from a place of love after all valentine's day is all about love oh that is just so sweet so special indeed now uh, there's been voice notes there have been lots of comments but we're going to keep uh, those coming through and we're going to keep chatting to you mzanzi right now though after all those comments i've definitely worked myself an appetite so let's tuck in and enjoy while you do exactly the same thing and tuck in and enjoy the rest mm, of your feel-good breakfast show cheers <laughs>
Mm. Oh, Raul, save some breakfast for me. We have Danelle Weekly back in studio and we're going to talk all about Back to Varsity. Moms, this is a conversation you want to be part of and dads if you have a kid going to university. I think that if there's one thing you will attest to is the saying a friend of mine with little kids said, the days drag but the years fly. Very and much so. And it is true to think that you've got a first-time university Hello. student in your household officially. The horror. The horror <laughs> and the joys that it's going to bring. And then we also want to show you another delicious recipe that you can whip up in the air fryer. That is still on its way, so stay tuned. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your feel-good breakfast show. And you're just in time because it's that time of the year when the vast excitement is real. It is the time for a new chapter and most importantly, a new res or digs or bedroom makeover. And here to talk us through the styling of the ultimate student sanctuary is writer and founder of The Weekly Report, Danelle Weekly, joining us back in studio. Thank you. Oh, you're a first-time mom of a university university student. I am. Can you believe it? I, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> now I can imagine getting your daughter ready for going to university for the first time. Was it was it a, a, an exciting experience or was it a bit of a stressful experience? No, it's so, it's so exciting. Like it's such an amazing time of their lives. It's so exciting and I think all of us as parents like so it feels like it was five minutes ago when you were doing it yourself. Yes. And now you're in it and doing it again. No, and now it's you're been helping amazing. them. Oh. This was, it is a bit stressful, but it's amazing. Well, for some parents, this might be very stressful, even for the students. So, Dan, you are here to help us out. Yes. So, let's get the bedroom sorted. What are some okay. of the must haves when it comes to whether you are in res, in digs, in your own bedroom, staying at home, some bedroom essentials? So, I think. The two things to bear in mind is that space is small and that you don't want to spend a fortune. True. So I've got lots of basics here. There's a silky soft bale set. So this is an amazing duvet and pillow combo set, oh. which is brilliant. It's super affordable. So it's a nice starting point. 
I brought extra pillows, though, for the sole reason that varsity students, as I can now attest, <laughs> need way more than they need. Not just for sleeping, but for a lot of screen time ah. and smushing around and whatever. So I've got it's those. all about the comfort, and I see you also have the mattress I protector. I did. I added the mattress protector, <gasps> which I think... It's great if it's your own mattress because it prolongs longevity, but also if it's not your own mattress, it's great for a variety of other reasons. Definitely. So I think that's a real hack for moving into a room, a mattress be protector. Because that's going to be the case. If you're going to be moving into an apartment or a res, the bed is there. Sure. Some apartments yes. are furnished. You don't know what happened on that mattress, so it feels mattress like protector. Yeah, it, it feels like it's yours again. <laughs> exactly. Hygienic, hygienic and perfect. Now, when it comes to bedding, I made this mistake thinking, oh, I'm an adult. I want white bedding. I quickly realized you do a lot of eating on your bed and snacking and studying and pens and all of that avoid white bedding while you are a student. Yeah, and I think I think what's also a good tip is to have two sets of bedding. Yes. So that because, you know, you think you're going to be so efficient about your laundry and stuff, but you might not be. No. So at least while one is being washed, you've got, you can kind of replenish straight away. So keep a second set on standby. Definitely. Just like a simple... Again, like stick to the basics. Stick to the basics. Well, one is in the wash, the next one yeah, is, is on, on the sure. bed. Now we've got the bedroom pretty much covered. Let's move over to the okay, bathroom. So bathroom, <laughs> same theory. <laughs> Keep it simple. Keep it simple and acknowledge the fact that you're not going to be dedicated to the laundry cause till the end of time. True. So we have got these beautiful Chanel bath mats. They can also go in the, the wash, these which is These are so brilliant. easy to wash and they don't age. I've seen bath mats. You wash them a couple of times and then they look tatty. Yeah, and I think these are beautiful. They feel, they feel nice and they're super easy to use. And the same again with the towels. I've pulled a whole lot of like super absorbent towels. So this is a great set. It's six little towels. It's antibacterial. Great set. But there are a whole lot here that that are zero twist and low twist technology, which basically means they super absorbent, they're very quick drying, they stay fresh for longer. And I quite like all of these colors as well because I think that they kind of easy for everybody. They I also love easy. the stripe. And I mean, a lot of the digs and places you move into, they are a little on in terms of the infrastructure, they can be dated. So you bring a pop of fresh color, your favorite color. Sure. You bring you bring some personality into any space that you're going to be staying in. That's we exactly also have it. this beautiful toilet brush yeah, cleaning so I mean, set. Again, beautiful essentials that elevate the space without being plasticky. So the little soap dispenser, which you can just kind of keep refilled. So great for sustainability as well. The toilet brush set, this is just like little toothbrushy Great bits for the and toothbrush pieces. and the toothpaste. And of course, never forgetting the part that you're going to use the most. <gasps> the, laundry the laundry basket. The laundry basket. You know, a lot of, I, <laughs> I envy the students who got to go home every weekend and have their laundry washed by Mama Bear. So I think I might be one of those. That's why I chose one of these, because it's light to carry. It's I like to the laundry carry. or to Mama's you car. Just, you just put it in the car yeah. and boom. Exactly. Mom, mom helps you with your laundry. <laughs> I love that. Now, when it comes to having your space, especially if you've got a roommate or perhaps it's your own space and you just want to upgrade it from being a, a scholar to now a university student or a varsity student, how can we add a touch of personality? So I brought a couple of things and I did bring small things because to be honest, you know, those rooms are... Space is limited. Space is limited. There's also a lot of your own stuff that needs to be going on. I brought a couple of faux plants and they are faux plants because no one is expecting you to water them <laughs> ever. <laughs> they will be green till the end of days. A couple of these, I always love this one. I think it's so cute on those little, you know, rays that's often got those skinny little shelves. Yeah, about the things floating shelves. That can just like, they kind of add a little bit of something. And I did add, because I couldn't resist, obviously, a bit of a candle and a scented room diffuser. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if this is maybe for everybody's varsity room, <laughs> but I love them. I think like, it's just like, it's such a beautiful smell to kind of walk into something fresh. It doesn't have to be girly. I wish I had that. I'm thinking that. about the like <laughs> rugby and soccer boys out there whose moms are listening to this thinking like, my son is not necessarily going to want a vanilla scented candle, but there's lots of like cedar woods and other beautiful mm. sort of musty, you know, that are gorgeous. So I think that's, adds a little something to the room that keeps things small and simple. Oh, I love yeah. this. I love that we've gone through some of the basics, the essentials. And my next question, are you going to be the type of mom that's going to make a little ma pucky? Because I would fly <laughs> home and my mom would have 
bunch of leftover dinners in containers, perfectly portioned, so that when I missed home, I can just defrost one of my marpaki and have a definitely, homemade meal. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> so otherwise, we know you all will be eating two-minute noodles for the rest of the time. Oh, gosh, I lived off boiled potatoes and baked beans. It was <laughs> awful. But listen, you can now <laughs> kit out your res with the ultimate Woolies Homeware Essentials. And while you are at it, get 20% off selected duvet inners and pillows until the 4th of February. Shop it at Woolworths. You can do so in store, online, as well as on the app. There are some T's and C's that apply, but happy shopping. absolutely inspired for almost every occasion this has been a show like no other and we've got to do it one more time right here in the kitchen and this is something special that you're going to absolutely love so let me see if i can sell you on this one listen up for this right we're talking about something crispy creamy and easy yeah i think you're already sold and you are about to be diving into this recipe and making it for all your friends because we're going to be making an air fried pork belly salad with a creamy honey dressing and a perfect summer dinner that's a little fancy but easy to throw together and of course zoe couldn't resist coming to join me on this one because it is a treat to say the least all right oh, uh, you're a fan of pork belly love pork mm -hmm. belly but i even love my air fryer more so the <laughs> fact that you're giving me a recipe i can do in the air fryer i'm intrigued which is crazy because normally Normally you do not do things like this in an air fryer, but somehow it works so, so well. And we're going to show you just how it's done, right? So um, you're going to assist me with this one? Yes. All right, so we've got two things happening here. There's a dressing, uh, which is on the right-hand side. So that's some honey. You've got some mustard. And then I'm going to grab our hero ingredients. Okay, so I'll get going on yeah. our dressing with the honey and the mustard. But of course, there's one thing that you've got to add to that, and that's a half a cup of our double cream yogurt, which oh. is really going to bring this thing to life, let me tell you. So while Zoe's on that, I'm going to be putting together what we would call like a, uh, not a basting, but it's just really something that's going to bring some of the flavor out, and especially on the underside of this uh, pork belly that we have here. So what we've got is some sugar going in there. We've got some white pepper as well, and then we've got some five spices. Now, this is like a Chinese blend of spices that has really kind of brought a lot of meats, especially pork. You know, in China, they're really big on their pork, on their ramens, etc. And uh, this this has been perfectly curated to bring all this to life. So I'm going to oh. add a pinch of salt to that. How's that uh, dressing coming This dressing on? is looking oh, look beautiful. At look at that creaminess. Nice. We've got the mustard seeds. And I probably should have added the honey last because now all the honey is stuck at the bottom. But hey, <laughs> we learn That's as we okay. go. Um, so I've just finished this beautiful mix of a basting, which you can see there while I'm turning it up. Maybe the camera's got a view of it right now. But it really comes together quite nicely. And uh, this is where the fun begins because oh, you can actually start basting that but more importantly don't baste the top and why because there's a little bit of like science that comes into this right because once we put this in the air fryer a lot of the fat's going to render and okay. normally in an air fryer that fat would disappear through that filter which is that basket that it sits on but we're not going to do that we're actually taking this meat and placing it on top of this tin oh, foil. So the, the, the fat can stay by the meat. Yes, so okay. we're keeping all the flavor of the fat that gets rendered out of the skin especially, and we're allowing it to kind of uh, soup up and just become a pool of marinade within itself. So okay. that's why we're not going to baste the, the, the fatty part of this too much because that fat's already coming out. Okay. So we don't want to add more to it. We don't want to add more oil unnecessarily. So you can get a light basting on the top, but the bottom where the meat is, that's, that's really where we're we going to work this. So yeah. are we just going to do a teeny tiny yeah, just light a teeny basting? Tiny bit. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. That's great. And then do we flip that onto the foil? Yeah, then you can flip it on the foil. But what you want to do is actually just baste the underneath of that, right? Oh, so I thought I was going to flip it on the foil and then baste that. Oh, you could actually do that, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> that's just probably a okay. smart idea. But this is where we really want this basting to kind of get into the meat right now. And you'll see it has uh, tenderization sort of uh, effects. It has flavorizing effects as well. And it just really just allows this to get absorbed in by the meat. And again, not adding too much oil because we'll be left over with a lot of that rendered from the fat which adds oh. and enhances the flavor of this there we go beautifully oh, done this yes looks please beautiful. so like i said now what we're going to be doing is obviously taking this meat i'm gonna i don't know if i should leave the fat side on top or not what do you think actually i think put the fat side fat on, on top, top yeah. yeah so we can get a nice crispiness on that but now this is what i meant with regards to the fold so you're kind of going to have this folded over so that it keeps most of the fat and when we place it in the air fryer like you see over here bum, bum, bum. and let me actually just bring this closer so you guys can see what i'm talking about so i've got the air fryer 
stay there. This is the basket I was talking about that lets the fat like kind of render out. But we're keeping it by placing this straight on top, making sure that it all curls up. There we go. So and that if I can none show of the you, fat drips off. Yeah, check it that. Make sure it is like a perfect little foil basket. Beautifully done. And then as simple as that, we pop it in the air fryer. Just a reminder, we are using the air fryer for this. You're gonna go at about 180 degrees for about 30 minutes and voila, simple as that, yeah. That's amazing. So we've got our base thing that's been done and put on the meat. You've got our lovely drizzle that's got that double cream added to it. Uh, simply what we're gonna do is fast forward in the future because we've already prepared something for us right now. So we've got our final bowl over here. So let me just take this out I of the way. I can clear that for oh, you. Thank you so much. And then we're gonna start off with some of this stuff. So we've got some cabbage going in here. So this is really gonna kind of pre uh, create the base of this meal. So pop some cabbage in and love the colors that we're using here. We've got some apple as well, which is gonna be really fun. Um, while we are putting all of this together, because I said apple, we've got some uh, spring onion going in there too. You've got that uh, lovely sort of dressing that you've just created. So we're gonna pop that in. Don't forget our meat. That's very important. So does the dressing go on top? Yeah, yeah. so we'll okay. leave that for like the final. Oh, We've got some well, pecan nuts over there too. Amazing. Well, we are yeah. using Clover's double cream plain yogurt for the dressing. It is a real trick because it is full body and it's the flavor just makes this dressing absolutely irresistible and indulgent. How Look much of that dressing this. is necessary? This is freaking restaurant quality if you ask me. Oh, I love it. I was a bit nervous about this, I'm going to be honest. Firstly, making uh, pork in an air fryer, but it came out so well. The I fact that we need to try the pork belly that's been made in the air fryer okay. and give the honest All review right. on whether the air fryer well, is the way of going. Let me get some, some sauce going. on over there yeah. and some on, crispy I'll skin. And let's sauce. dig in. Mzanzi, you ready for the proof in the pudding? Because the thing, I think the fear with cooking your pork belly in the air fryer is it being dried out. Nope, no drying out. I've got a perfectly roasted mm. uh, fat skin here. It's crunchy, the insides are soft. Mm. The, oh, the flavor is so good. Mm. This is a win. This dressing is a winner. I think that just, that's like the cherry on the top of all of this. Honestly, mm. that double creaminess coming through. <gasps> With a oh, hint of heaven. honey, the sweetness mm. and the mustard, beautiful blend. Oh, this is delicious. Absolutely well, well played. Done. Well, Mzanzi, you know where to get it. Expresso.com for your recipe inspiration. This one was done with the beautiful double cream inspiration, which I think has just finished this off perfectly. I can't even talk. I just want to carry on chewing. But you go make this at home, and I trust everybody is going to love it. Oh, this was good. Nicely done. Double cream plain yogurt from Clover. Just plain amazing. The food there right now is making my mouth water. I'm not okay. But look, Expresso family, let, let me take my focus off of that. I want you to walk with me, right? Let's imagine this. You get to buy that yacht that Moshe was talking about. You get to buy your dream car, perhaps even a mansion, because that's what you deserve. And that's what we want for you, which is why on the way, we're going to be letting you know how you could possibly become a multi-millionaire with a lot of my love. And we're going to be giving you all the details. But with that as well, we will always make sure that we end off the show on such a strong note that you can't help but have the best day ever, which is why we have got the king. He's going to be back on the carpet and he's going to be performing yet again. Umobiyazo. You got to make sure you stick around for that and a whole lot more right here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your feel-good breakfast show. And if you are 
passionate about the game, then you can use your sport know-how to predict match day results and claim your share in today's sports stakes jackpots. Now, your chances of winning big, it could become a reality off the pitch. Oh, yes, indeed. Now, listen to this. You can play your favorite sports day game on the nationallottery.co.za website. So make sure to play now. And why? Because you can stand a chance to earn bragging rights to be Inja Yeah Game. What are you waiting for? Get involved in this one. Well, it's time for a performance. So let's head on over to Zanil and Joburg. I truly hope that you win, my love, but you got to go and do the right thing to do so. For today, though, I know that we are winning indeed because we have got such a talented king, someone you can't help but love. Everyone with his song, so please put your hands together for none other than Mwabi Yazo! from Clover. Just plain amazing. Another feel-good production.
Gengi.